right, welcome everyone to the October 5th meeting of the Historic District Committee. Um, the board's action in these matters has been deemed to be quasi-judicial in nature. If any person believes any member of the board has a conflict of interest, that issue should be raised at this point or it will be deemed waived. Um, I'd like to introduce our members. Um, we have over here Dan Recording Brown. in progress. Okay, thank you very much. Good evening. Okay. Uh, Martin Ryan. Good evening. And Reagan Rudig, Vice Chair. Good evening. Yeah. My name is John Wyckoff. I'm the Chair. Nick Cracknell, Planning Department. What is it? Good evening. Planning Department. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So. Who's uh, next? Oh. <laughs> oh, Rich. Rich Blaylock. Good evening. Margot Doring. Hello. David Adams. Good evening. And Karen Buffard. Good evening. Okay, our first order of business is the approval of minutes. John? Yes. I have one uh, recommendation that I pass to Nick to okay. tighten up the um, matter regarding number 224 Marcy Street, which was on October 14th, uh, October, September 14th. Okay. Um, just a little bit of tightening up on the clarification of the wording. All righty. So Nick has that. Mm -hmm. All right. I have a correction for the first minutes. All right. <clears throat> um, on the public hearing on um, Mill Street, I uh, recused myself, and for some reason I'm there recommending that it be put off till next month. So somehow that that's kind of difficult. That's because I was in the audience. Uh, yep. Yeah. So that <laughs> somehow got mixed up. All right, so did you get that, Nick? Yeah. 33 Mill Street. Yeah. Yep, yep. He wasn't there. All right, with those corrections, um, <laughs> can I have a motion? Motion to approve as presented with those uh, changes forthcoming. Two can you? I'll second. All right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Aye. All right, so there's the minutes. And now we're on to administrative approvals. And the ever popular Nick Cracknow will take over now. Do you want to go over all the postponements first? Yeah, why don't you do that? What do we have for postponements? A lot. A lot. We, oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly everything. Yeah, I know it. Okay, so we have a request to postpone the petition of 1 Rains Avenue, LLC, 31 Rains Avenue, LLC, and 203 Maplewood Avenue, LLC owners. I'm not going to read the whole thing. We have a request to postpone uh, petition of 43 Holmes Court owner for property located at 43 Holmes Court. Well, you're certainly right. We have a request to postpone Sheaf Street Condominium Association mm -hmm. owner and the Smith Family Declaration of Trust, Todd C. Smith, trustee and applicant for property located at 159 State Street, Unit 3A. We have a request to postpone petition of Seacoast Management Consulting, LLC, for property located at 3 Walton Alley. We have a request to postpone petition of Pickering Wharf Condominium Association owner, for property located at 33 South Mill Street. Is there any more hiding down here? Yep. I'm there is. Yep. Under old business, we have a request to postpone a work session requested by Lucky 13 Properties LLC owner for property located at 361 Islington Street. We're in permission to allow new construction and and then what is this postponed to the November 2nd meeting? That's another one. That's another one. This is a work session requested by 7KPH LLC owner for property located at 324 Maplewood Avenue. So um, if I could have a motion, we could get those postponed. Before we make a motion, could we pull um, item C, which is uh, State Street, just like isn't this one has been postponed numerous, numerous, numerous times? 159 State. This is the one with <coughs> the condenser up on the yes side. It's been postponed many, many, many times, and I'm just wondering. 
what action, if any, is going to happen on this? Well, I've been in communication with the applicant uh, previous to the last request for a continuance. I believe they requested for two or three months uh, since June or July to now. So it hasn't been continued since then. And what the applicant was attempting to do is see if they can remove the condenser or the, the mini split off the side of the building on the second floor and see if they could find a place for it on the ground where the one it's replacing currently sits. Yeah. And there are other mechanical uh, devices down there on the ground between the buildings. <clears throat> so I was hopeful they were going to come back and they may still be planning to do so with a revised application that would take it off the wall. So you but feel that hasn't you, happened yet. I'd say this is, is the last continuance. Okay. I think out know, of respect for for you and anybody living there that got a notice back in February that we would re-notice this if they don't show up at the next meeting. Okay. That's okay. Very good. We'll have to uh, remember that when it comes up next month again. <clears throat> After, if, if it comes up as a yeah, request. Yeah. If it comes up, um, I will make a motion to approve the postponements as listed. Yes. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those against. Now I'm handing it over to Nick. All right. Where, where was the certified local government thing on the uh, agenda? Was it earlier or after the admin approvals? I just don't have the agenda in front of me. Um, it's not after it's admin. Not well, why don't we maybe talk about that for a minute? There's not a whole lot to say, but uh, you. I'm sorry. I thought it was on the agenda. It's, it's not in the staff it. report. Yeah. Uh, that it would be coming. I have prepared a draft application <laughs> that's this big. <laughs> it's almost all appendices of required documentation that the state needs to see to demonstrate that Portsmouth is eligible for listing as a certified local government community, which is part of the National Historic Preservation Act and program. The reason we, we fully qualify, I don't think there, there's anything we need to do other than get a vote of the city council to submit the application, which is quite it's beneficial. We don't have, we've got the ordinances, the rules of procedure, the guidelines, all that. That's what this is. So um, the idea is to submit this in November to the city council and get their approval to submit it to the, to the state. And if we are in fact uh, certified as a local government under the program, we will be eligible for some funding sources for uh, city and I think even nonprofit properties benefit from Portsmouth being designated. This gives us priority funding for competitive applications for preservation related work, whether it's survey work or brick and mortar work. It will definitely allow us uh, to address even some of our city buildings. Are you yeah. presenting this? No. Um, to the city council? I will be, yeah. Yeah. Yes. And so you're looking for a vote from us? I think it'd be good to get the support of the commission before I'm standing in front of the city council that you support it. But in fairness to you, since I didn't get it to you to today, <laughs> uh, take a look at it and we'll talk about it on the 2nd of November because I'm not going to be in front of the council before then. Does that sound reasonable? That sounds reasonable. I don't know. Sue Derry, are you in the audience? Did you want to say something? You, you know? I didn't know I was going to speak. You don't have to. I, well, that's all right. I do. Um, I'm Sue Sterry, co-chair of the Cemetery Committee. Um, I brought this to Nick back in the day, six months ago probably, and we've been working on it. Um, I need the historic district to be, well, not me personally, but the Cemetery Committee and the city needs us to be a certified local government. And as Nick pointed out, it opens the door for a lot of um, things for the city, not just as he mentioned, but also for the cemeteries. Um, we're right in the middle of trying to preservation and restoration in all the cemeteries. There are seven of them. Um, and I came across in my research to find out what funds were out there, I came across this program. We have applied to the Moose Plate and we will be applying to the LCHIP, but this is a totally different um, project. Um, for us, this would open up uh, the availability of to have professional grant writers. Um, when we go to apply for um, grants, it moves us up the list also because we've been acknowledged as a community that appreciates historic districts and the rules and regulations that go along with it. So I really want to thank Nick. He's put a lot of time in it with 
the um, intern this summer. Um, so I would just encourage you all to read it. It's it's beneficial both for the historic district and for the cemetery. So thank you for your interest in it, and hopefully, I think the city will pass it without any problem. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Sue. Right. And it is a quick read because the narrative is pretty thin uh, so far. I'd like to work on a cover letter for the for the mayor and the city council. So I, when I get that drafted, I'll yeah circulate that. Um, okay, we good on that? Okay. So on the admin approvals, there were nine listed on the agenda. Um, <clears throat> I'd start by saying 11 Walden is, is still not, hopefully there's nobody here from 11 Walden. Uh -huh. uh, is there? Good. Uh, they've asked for a continuance at the Board of Adjustment to deal with the location. So I would uh, recommend we postpone this to the next meeting in November because they don't have authorization to even be where they're putting it without the variance. Um, and David, I'm still working with them on an alternative location. It was a, you know, it's a rumor on the street. It just yep. seemed like it was a place we could go. Yep. Okay. Uh, so that leaves us with two through nine. And what I, I'd recommend, uh, I'll wait and hear if anybody's got any conflicts or <clears throat> not wanting to participate because you're in a butter. Uh, I would do items two, three, five, six, and nine, which are the I think the simpler applications. I think 553 Islington Street hopefully has someone in the audience to do a presentation. Yes, it's a little more complicated. I think there are 11 or 12 uh, modifications being made to that previously approved project on Islington. Uh, I think items seven and eight, um, okay. you know, might need a little discussion. Uh, 93 Pleasant being. Uh, the, the project downtown. Is there anybody that needs to recuse themselves from two through nine, any of them? All right. Okay, let's go. So let's go with uh, <clears throat> 621 Islington Street, units D and E, which is two and three. They are adding metal storm doors. Uh, pretty straightforward to me, but maybe I missed something. <clears throat> if anybody has any questions on that. Yeah. It's on the back of the building too, right? Yes. Yeah. So. Okay. All right. We can come back if somebody thinks that. So 55 yeah. Gates would be That's the next not. one, number five on my list. It is uh, an Ann Whitney project that's been previously approved. And my impression, I don't know if Ann, Ann I see you there, uh, is the request to change the window uh, and deal with the hip roof on the uh, you know, it's pretty clear on your application with the highlights. I just want to make sure that's what it is. And I don't know if anybody wants to discuss any of this with Ann, but again, the hip roof is on on the is it the side? The bay is on the side. On the side yeah. Right. What happened to 553 Islington? Is oh, that, that we're coming back to okay. that because it's right, more complicated. You. Sorry. No, oh, it's all right. I didn't so, does it. anybody have any questions for Ann on 55 Gates in respect to the? Marvin Elevate being used at the dimension shown uh, and the hip roof over the door. Over, over the, the door or the bay? Door. Oh, that's a that's door a system. Door. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, triple door. Yeah, got it. Everybody okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. So 12 South Street is a, a mechanical uh, condenser with a screen. So it seemed. And it's, it is back a house with a screen. Anybody have any? No, didn't think so. So 31 Aldridge being, I think, the last of the super simple ones is just uh, as part of the administrative approval stipulation on the approval of this project last month is that we had asked for a bracket design to support that overhang, and this is what they've provided. Which, Again, to my eyes, seemed <coughs> seemed adequate, but that's for you to decide. Anybody have any heartburn or suggestions on that? So it's good. All right, why don't you vote on those, and then maybe we'll go to. I move we approve those designated five. administrative approvals. Second. All those in favor? Aye. All right. Aye. Against. All right. All right. So let's go back to five. 53 Islington, ask the applicant to come forward. I believe I counted 11, 12, maybe 13 changes from 
the chimney, dormer windows. <laughs> there are full screens, and I, I didn't see a stipulation in the approval for the half screen, even though that's generally always what we're seeking. Um, really? But there are other changes here in relation to the doors, railings, trim, a lot, a lot of little shifts and modifications. So I'll pull it up on the screen if you want to walk through um, with your name and uh, my name is are. Tim Broshu. I'm the principal of Audra Architecture LLC, the architect for the project. Um, I also have Larry Johnson, the contractor here, if there's any specific questions that he can help with. Um, I just, so um, I just this, would wonder why you would um, put simulated divided light windows, which are more expensive, and then cover them over with a complete full screen, black screen. So from any angle besides head on, you can't see anything. Um, the, there was no discussion of screens that I remember from our, our original approvals or anything, so we weren't aware of, of that as a requirement. As an architect, why would you do that? Um, it was just the way they ordered the windows. Okay, so keep going. Um, so just to back up, so these, uh, um, this is in response to a compliance inspection um, from the city for our, our final site plan approval. The buildings is essentially substantially complete at this point. Um, and so I've just gone down through item by item and, and give it some responses. Um, so first of all, um, there was an iron rot, a wrought iron fence out front. Um, at the time of the inspection, that wasn't completed yet. It has now been completed, as you can see in the photos. It looks really nice. Great, thank you. <laughs> um, it does look good. The next item. Um, a chimney removed, so the existing building had, there were two chimneys around kind of the center corridor, um, and the one on the right had at some point been cut down and capped basically to the ridge of the roof, um, which you can see in the top left photo there. Um, when they got in and opened up everything up on the inside, they found that that chimney was in really bad shape. You can see a picture on the right there um, of the, some holes in the brick and it's pretty deteriorated. Um, so they took that whole chimney down, um, down to the basement and removed it. Um, and you can see the photos on the bottom now with that chimney removed. So um, that's what was done. Um, I, I'm not sure what else there is to do about that at this point, but we're open to did, you did you take it down to the basement? I believe yes. so. Yes, it did. So was that part of the approval, the double chimneys? We know? Weren't there two chimneys shown on the approved plan? That's why it's on uh, here. It was shown as it is now with one chimney, the full chimney, and then the other one capped down at the ridge line, which is, again, with the existing Okay, so ones. that's where I was confused looking at this. If, if the approved plans here at the HDC only showed one chimney and the other chimney was capped under the roof line, this shouldn't even be... No, you on your list. It's not what you said. can see it. It's yeah. about that high. It's not right. capped under the roof line. Oh. It's just at the ridge line. So at the ridge line. Sure. You can Sorry. see it. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So you did have two chimneys on the previous approval, which is why it's on the list here tonight. Oh, right. There's sure. only one left. Right. Well, we'll have yeah. to look at the plans when we. No, I think, I think that's right. We've established. What you see in the upper left is what was in the approved plans, mm -hmm. and what's there now is in the lower right. Yeah. It's gone. <clears throat> okay. Keep going. Okay. Okay, let's do 15. Um, 15. Um, this is a dormer in the front of the building um, up on the third floor. Um, at, at the time of the original approval, we didn't really, we didn't think this was original. Um, it seemed kind of out of place with, with the rest of the construction. Um, we had some details in our drawings. Um, where are you here? Um, to doesn't show on the screen there, but we had a detail here just to add a little bit of trim at the, at the top to dress it up a little bit. Um, that was, was missed when they came through and did the siding, and so you can see how it got built there. I guess the question is if there's if there's if that's okay as it is, or if there's something else you want to see us do there. Was it was it a conscious decision to get rid of the mullet the have one set a unit window instead of two separate windows? Um, the windows originally on the drawings, that's actually the next item, I think. The, these windows were, they were going to keep the windows that were there. Um, they, the owner decided to go ahead and replace those windows as they were working through the project. And so they, 
they purchased this as a, as a double window there instead of two separate windows. So, so um, they removed the stud pocket intentionally. Oh yeah, because there must have been two or three or more two by fours between those two windows. I think so. Head yeah, weights maybe a head weight. Yeah, two. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, I think we should just keep going and then come back. We'll come back to the okay to discussions. <clears throat> um, 16, actually, you're ahead of me, Nick, I think. No. Sorry? Yeah. I'm sorry, my oh, print looks one? different. But, um, the next item seven. I had was 16, the dormer windows changed to two over one light and reduced in size. Um, I just mentioned that that originally they were um, existing to remain, but they decided to, um, to replace them. So it's tied in with the, the previous item, I think. Um, number 17, uh, five windows on the main structure changed to two over two light. These were the front windows on the building, which were originally the six over six um, Harvey White replacement windows. Um, originally, when we got the project approved, um, the HCC actually was interested in having us replace those to be the two over two windows, which we're doing around the rest of the building. At that time, the owner wasn't ready to commit to doing that, but he did during construction decide to replace those, and we made them the two over two, similar to the rest of the building, which is we believe was more historically uh, accurate. Um, and then the full screens installed, you've asked that already. Um. Can I just ask you one question on that because I haven't had yeah. a chance to look at it uh, in depth. Were full screens asked for or shown in the specs that you provided the commission? I don't believe so. I went, I went back through the drawings that we had submitted and I didn't see a reference to screens <laughs> one way or the other. So. I mean, sometimes people come in and don't either have that answer yet or they don't intend to put screens on because mm -hmm. they're, they're climate controlled rooms and they've got simulated divide light windows. So it's appropriate you're here even if it's not stipulated because it wasn't included in your, most likely, in your application that you would put a full screen on the, yeah. on the window. So I, we'll keep going. But. Nick, I was just going to suggest, I, I think you've got all of these audio, I mean you have all of these recordings, right? Well, yeah, I'm not, I don't know that we need. I, I don't want I mean, to rely on oral I testimony. I could come in and listen to the meeting if you thought that that was well, some. Let's see where where we get here okay. in the conversation. I have a quick question on these windows, though. Yeah. Um, the approved drawings show that they're the six over six are remaining, but I remember having the conversation about having to have them be tempered glass. Maybe because, because they were so low. low. Yeah. But maybe that was why. So I'm there was at one point there was a separate applic um, application we made where they had ordered um, smaller windows because right. they were they, uh. because some of these are down like a foot from the floor so they wanted to get some some shorter windows so that they could get more sill height on them. That was denied by the HDC. Well, they so were they installed, were, not they, just ordered. <laughs> they, they were, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So they Big reordered difference. them and got the, the larger windows that were originally yeah. specified, which you see on the front now. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yeah, I was just trying to remem remember exactly what the yeah. course of events was. Yeah. <laughs> that was good, um, good memory. <clears throat> okay, the next one. Um, the second floor deck column does not match or align with the column below. Um, so I think there's two issues here. One is the original, it's hard to see in the photo there, but the original deck was a little bit wider, so it actually overlapped with those eave returns. Um, and so when they rebuilt it, they pulled it in a little bit so that the eave returns, so that the, the deck sits inside of the eave return. So we think it actually looks a little better that way. And it worked out structurally for them to, to align the column where they did. Um, and then I think there's a, a question about the detailing. On the drawings, I had a general note about the, the trim work on that deck, that upper deck column, uh, matching the trim work down below on the existing column, which you can see on the, um, on the, the, the yellow column there. Um, you can see on the bottom right here that the trim that got put on it, it did get kind of a, a, a little capital trim. Um, it's not quite as, uh, it's not an exact match to what's down below, but um, it's, it, the column ended up being thinner too. So the, Overall, the column is not quite the same as the one down below. Um, the ground level deck door changed to a nine light. 
Um, they actually just kept the door that was there in this location. They didn't end up replacing the door, which is something we had um, had shown on the drawings we had submitted originally. Um, so this one, they've kept that door. They repainted it. You can see the difference in the, in the doors on the left and the right. Um, the next item, the ground level deck railings. Uh, originally, the drawings had shown a railing being added on the side of this little side deck. Um, there was a fence there before. Um, you can see the grade drop there is only about 16 or 17 inches, um, and so the railing wasn't needed, and they decided not to, just not to add that railing there. Um, on the side addition, so this, if you remember the, the overall look of the building, there's the main original historic building, and there's this, this little um, second one-story building on the side of it that is attached to the original building. Um, the comment here is just that the trim piece um, next to the door is one piece. It actually, the way they built it, that trim comes in and laps over the corner board, and so they just took a wider piece and extended it out to the corner of the building from that door trim. Um, that's what was being commented on here, but I don't know if that's a problem or not, but keep it open to you. Okay. Uh, the next item. Um, there was a, a boarded up basement window um, on the side of the building. Um, in discussing with the building inspector, the building inspector asked him to brick that in just because it's, it was really close to grade there. Um, and it seemed like, you know, it seemed like the right thing to do. Um, the rest of these items, um, just a general note, the, I bet the rest of these items are on the back of the building. Um, facing the railroad tracks and Ricci Lumber behind it. Um, the first item, the low slope roofs on the back corner. So this is the, this is again that little side addition that's really been cobbled together over time. And you can see that the roof on the top right there has been built up in multiple iterations to try to get the drainage to work and it was never really working. And so they decided to take that roof off and rebuild it as a more simple gable that, that had better pitch and, and better drainage. Um, you can see that in the lower right there. Um, so that's what was done with that. Uh, the next item, the portico design altered. This is again on the back of the building. Um, the original design had shown a portico with, a, with a, basically a flat roof similar to the front entry portico. Um, when they redid the roof on that little side piece, um, they changed the design to uh, more of a, a shallow gable, similar to the pitch of the roof up above and to the, the pitch of that, of that gable um, that they added on the side of the other side piece. Um, then there's a note, the window above the portico was moved further up. Um, again, this, there's actually a change in height between the two portions of the building there, a um, uh, change in floor height inside the building. And so that window was raised up to basically align, provide a better sill height um, in that side of the building. Um, the deck being omitted, here we had originally had a bulkhead back in that corner that was proposed for that corner um, that once we got into the, the foundation, we realized it wasn't gonna work there and we moved it over to the other side which was something that we got approved for, through a site plan amendment. Um, and so this side deck had originally had a more convoluted layout because of that, because we had to get around the, the bulkhead. And so now that with the bulkhead's gone, we've simplified that, it just comes out to a landing and a few steps down. <clears throat> um, this is a note, applicant to provide evidence Anderson 400 series windows were installed. I believe they've um, submitted that information. Um, another note about the, I think this is a duplicate, but the deck reduced in size. Um, I think I've addressed that already. And then the last one, a small window next to the deck door omitted. Um, so this is up on that third floor uh, where the deck is. There was a little, again, vinyl window that seems like it was added um, at some point that didn't seem to have any historical value. Um, it's probably better without it. They had decided to remove that when they redid the work up there for the deck. So, 
Um, those were the items that we had to respond to. Well, that's quite a few items. So I hope everyone uh, made a little list or something. Would somebody like to start off at any discussion? Martin? Sure. Um, this is the most items I've ever seen come back to this board that were not in alignment with what was approved. Um, it's almost like a question of what is what good is this board if if you're not going to follow the approvals? Um, I would I would say come back to us with a list of what you're prepared to make good on. That would be my recommendation. Um, I don't want to sit here and yeah. and start piecing through this. It's a it's a lot. We could do that, though. We could look at each individual item and such. I don't know. Um, Reagan, what do you think? I mean, most of these changes I don't have an issue with. You know, the windows, I remember at saying, well, we hope that you do come back and replace these front windows because we don't like the look of the vinyl windows on the front and on the facade. So, you know, that's an improvement. The half screens are kind of on us. Um, we are the ones who, who have to stipulate that each time. I mean, because, because I know that when you order a window, the, the, the default is a full screen. Um, and at the same time, because we didn't know that it was going to go, these new windows were going on the facade, we didn't probably uh, pay as much attention as we should have on that. Um, I mean, generally most of these changes I, I think are fine um, in, in the grand scheme of things, um, but it, it, again, it's it's you know we're dealing with sort of like well, it's um, it's the procedure <laughs> that, so, that we all have to follow, or else you know why why are we here? So um, nothing in particular shoots out at you. No, I mean, I don't like the composite deck rail, but we approve that. So, <laughs> you know, again, yeah. that's. Uh, so, um, if you don't mind, I'm nope, going to. Nope, go ahead. I mean, Dan, yeah. before I go to the left hand side. Again, I, <clears throat> I think overall the building's 100% better. Um, it is amazing that so many changes just went ahead without much thought and had to come back again. but. But most of the changes, I think, were for the good and, and are minor, so I have no huge problems. So, over here. Um, thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm a little disappointed just, you know, so many, 32 items is a lot. Um, but as Commissioner Brudig said, you know, we did approve some of this and some of this was unexpected. Um, the only one that really jumps out at me is the the door, the windows in the dormer. It just that didn't that, yeah. So, yeah. So I I definitely have a problem with the wind the dormer, the way it was constructed, the fact that the mulling was removed, and in the original drawings that were included in this package for reference, there's even some detail that was supposed to be put on, and that was just completely left off. So you went from uh, a dormer that admittedly was not Italianate to something that looks extremely modern. So that that doesn't, I can't support that at all. Um, the chimney is concerning to me. Um, there's probably nothing that can be done at this point. It's the just in general, the fact that we meet twice a month, that we, some of these things could have been brought to us before just barging ahead and making it basically impossible to rectify. Um, and if the idea was ask for permission later or forgiveness later, you know, that's just really not a good way to set up your reputation in the district. Um, but you know, all that aside, the other problem I have is the portico in the back, and that this looks like a modern portico off of I'm not sure what. Um, it, it doesn't reference the style of the front of the building. It 
doesn't really even look like the back of the building. It's just something completely different. Um, and and completely redoing the the slope of the roofs in the back. Again, I think probably you, if you'd asked us, we probably would have been just fine with it be, because you needed it for structural reasons, and that was understandable. But you know, to just go ahead and make something that's practically impossible for us to tell you to put it back the way it was is kind of rude. Those are my reactions. Mr. Chairman, may I, if I may, um, I don't recall it in conversation about screens at all. So whether they're full screens or half screens seems beyond what we had any approval on. Um, I, I, the lesson on the sh little shed in the back is that it was a little teeny sh uh, separate building, pitched roof <laughs> building on the back that had a lean to attached to it. They frequently don't work out. But in the process of straightening out the roof, they lost complete track of the history of that having started out as a small doghouse type outbuilding and then getting a shed put on it. Uh, and the fenestration still fits in that story, but it now looks ex extraordinarily awkward because the buildings change shape around the fenestration because they've moved the ridge. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, the, as far as the chimney's gone, to, to make a huge argument out of two brick of chimney that were there for me to appreciate uh, and now being gone, not much of a loss, except it does sort of move that whole prospect of that chimney ever being replaced to about zero. Um, no, it's gone. And uh, I'm sorry it had a hole in it. It just, huh, just seems like, I'm holes. sorry, it just doesn't seem like much to me. I spent my life in the business and a hole in a chimney was par for the course. <laughs> um, the dormer window, the dormer, as, as uh, we've heard, is, is more than likely not, the little doghouse dormer is no problem, more than likely not an original feature to the building. Looks to me like something been put on in the 30s. Um, but now it doesn't look like that at all. And I think it, it belies the history of the house and even its uh, <coughs> previous history before you showed up with your plastic materials. Um, and. Uh, I do have to say that the loss of the wall surface, the backing pilasters and a woodwork of the, that uh, portico on the side, it's remarkable how you can go from a Greek Revival portico to a 1930s portico just by removing that little bit of material in the back. The profiles and color change seems like you've taken another little bit of history away from the building. Um, and the installation of the door to the shop by swapping that trim over seems extremely cottagey. The kind of thing, well, cottagey. I'll just go with that. Uh, so I don't know. I, I don't see. Okay. Yeah, I'm not voting for this at all. Uh, I don't. I don't see how you let a project get this out of control when you know that there's a group of not angry people, but people looking and worrying about the minutia of things. You went through the process of routing out. A, a recess detail on every one of the window casings, the corner boards. Uh, you made an attempt at replicating the old building out of uh, modern materials and worked hard at some of it, much more than your characteristic work. Uh, and then stumbled so hard over these other things that just somehow got in your way and decided it didn't matter. I'm sorry, I, it's, I'm going on too much. Karen. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with with uh, anything already said, and I'm going to pick out a small detail which just bothers me, um, and that's on the side addition. The door trim and corner board are one piece. It, it just looks, it, you use composite there, right? Is that composite? I believe so. Is that all composite? Yes. It just looks, to me, it just, I, I know it's a, it's a small building and it's a small detail, but to me, I would rather have seen the corner board um, separate from the, from the door trim. So I've got a few comments, and since you mentioned that, I mean, I ran into this problem before, and just for waterproofing, I decided to use a one wide board, a you know, say a one by ten, whatever. And so what I did is I ran it over my table saw and I put a little kerf in there that was only a quarter of an inch deep. And I don't think anybody could really tell that it wasn't two boards. This is the sort of thing you do when you're working on an 1850s historic building. I too have problems with the rear portico. Um, 
For one thing, uh, one thing that really makes it look awkward is that the, uh, the gable roof just emerges from the siding and there is no pilaster uh, on each side of that door uh, coming down. And by pilaster, you know what I mean. And it should have that to look like it's actually supporting this, um, this portico roof. And so it, it makes it look very modern and um, inexpensive, you know, something you might see on an inexpensive um, building. Um, yeah, I can put a roof over your door. That's cool. Um, the dormer, I'm so disappointed with that dormer because I remember we talked about that. And, and uh, uh, were you the architect in two years ago? Or Yes. Yes. And, you know, you made uh, enough uh, of a thing about it to actually point it out that you were going to replicate the uh, two arches, I, for lack of a better word, that are part. It's a sort of a wave that's over the front door that's part of the front portico. And um, it, it really seemed to, you know, help this building and, and help it retain its Italian look, which is what it was and what, you know, you were trying to keep it as. And then, um, you know, we know what happened. And the, the dormer that's on there now, it looks like one that could have been built on a garage, you know. That's a slam bam. Um, I can build a dormer in a day, and you can. <laughs> and that's what someone did. They they it, it just didn't pay any attention. Didn't sit up there and do the details that you had drawn out. So I'm disappointed in those um, three items. I also don't like the fact that you did take the columns down from the uh, original porch on the left hand side. Um, and uh, you, you were supposed to replicate them up top. And the columns that you replaced um, the original ones with were obviously much simplified. Um, so I'm talking about the left-hand side. I mean, they're very simplified. They really just have a piece of molding around the top. You know, some people think all you have to do is put a little two and a half inch crown around something. And, this is historical, not. <laughs> so I'm disappointed in four items, and um, that's it for me. So um, should we? Can I, can I say something? Yes, go yeah, ahead. Just, Nick. just <clears throat> um, I, trying to summarize at least what I'm hearing. And obviously, I've sat through the previous meetings uh, with with this project. You know, I agree with whoever said it here. For what it's worth, uh, this tired and neglected Italianate building has experienced a real good set of improvements yeah. uh, through this project. And I, I think replacing those windows, you're hearing from everybody probably, but certainly some people have said it, was it a huge improvement than leaving the, I guess they were vinyl replacement windows, I'm not sure, but they, they weren't good windows that were in the front of the building. Uh, I, I'd like to point out, you know, you, you guys tried to ditch the iron fence uh, halfway through the process, and that, that didn't work, and you've done a great job putting it back where you originally said it would be. Uh, so I think everybody here would agree retaining and restoration of that iron fence is really important, not only for this property, but the city. These are a, 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 rare, a rare thing, an artifact to still have in many of our communities, these, these old uh, iron fences, railings. Um, I And I feel like, lastly, on the positive side, from the street side, there was a lot of conversation here, especially from John, about the importance of that little building uh, and how it presents itself to Islington Street and what its historic use has been. And it, it seems to my eyes like he did a good job in having it on the front side still tell the story of uh, that it was independent from what it's now attached to. So it sounds like the, the down, the negative side of the equation of the balance sheet is really in no specific order. The screens, the dormer, and to a, a much lesser degree, I think for most people, the chimney removal uh, without permission. Um, so I would just <clears throat> suggest people think about, since the, the screens were not most likely, and no one's told us from the applicant's side, 
that they did ask for a full screen and nobody objected. I don't think screens were part of the presentation, so they weren't approved and they weren't disapproved. They just weren't there. I mean, you, you can't add a garage uh, later because, you know, you, you didn't get denied for a garage you didn't show. Um, so what about the idea of not having screens on the front facing facade of the windows that weren't even approved? So at least on Islington Street, there are no screens. And all of those rooms have a side window if they needed to open a window and get some ventilation. It, it certainly would look better from Islington Street if it had no screens on the front. And maybe it would. And then last thing to think about is maybe they come back for administrative approval. I think you got. I think what I'm hearing is you need to take another whack at that dormer mm -hmm. uh, and bring it more back to this or something better uh, in order to get approval for whatever that final design is. I, I, that's what I'm hearing. And I'm just trying to be a sounding board and, and push this thing to the next level. I, I would say that um, most everyone mentioned the dormer. Okay. A few of us mentioned the back portico. Um, I think that most of us were willing to accept the missing two brick chimney. I'm not sure, but I, that's the feeling that I got from everyone. Um, I had a couple personal comments, um, you know, about the left hand side there, but. Um, Chris John, if it makes you feel any better, um, the, the original first floor post is still there. It is on the side porch yes. mm -hmm. of the house. Yes. It's the replacement of the okay, deck in that post. Um, I see a deck column here. What's that? Oh, that's the second floor. That's the second yeah. floor. And then the, wow. so I don't know if that makes you feel any better about it. but It does make me feel better. <laughs> yeah. So I'm very sorry. I, I, I po commented on something that um, you hadn't done. So you restored that original uh, first floor column. Yeah, sorry, yeah. the original first floor column, as yeah. as it was, okay, it just touched Why it didn't up. you stop me? <laughs> well, we did, the, the comment, I believe the comment from the inspection was that, I, the note on here is it's basically yeah. just said second floor column to match first floor column, and it's not yeah. quite the same. Yeah. I mean, uh, as David might know, you could come down about six inches on that second floor column and wrap that again with some kind of astragal or half round molding. You know what I'm talking about, Dave? Indeed, a, yeah. a necking. And that would... It'd make it look like there's a capital to the column. Yeah, it which would is make it look more like a proper floor. capital on a column <sighs> because you very rarely see columns with just a top, you know. Um, so... <laughs> well, so, uh, so should, uh, can we, um, sorry, just to keep this yeah. going, should, should we approve a number of these changes, but not all of them? We could do that. Yeah. Martin. I was going to, I was going to suggest, and if you're coming back here for a blanket of, uh, forgiveness of approval of all these, I can't support that. Oh. I, but I, if you come back with a serious plan about what you can fix, and what you're asking for approvals for, maybe that that's a conversation that could, could occur that I could get around. Um, I don't think we can do it tonight. I, I think this is too much. This is like a work session. But Martin, I, 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 in all due respect, I, maybe you're right. But I, I think it's important to prioritize. It's either, you know, there's a lot of items on this list. Everybody's aware of that. He's enumerated them all. In my mind, it's about choosing the ones that are sort of non-negotiable and which I'm guessing isn't as long a list for everybody as it might be for you and getting consensus here so he knows what to do versus no, no nothing uh, <clears throat> beyond what's been said. May I suggest Certainly. that Mr. Cracknell is being extraordinarily charitable, <laughs> someone that's just ignored... <laughs> So the efforts. Well, he's not we, on the board. Yeah. Oh. Um, oh. I, I, I think I would like to go along with what Martin has proposed and leave them hanging 
uh, until they come up with something. I, it sounds like we're going to play a game of let's make a deal, but I think it's been said already that we're all pretty certain we're not going to make them put the chimney back to, so that we can see two courses of brick above the ridge. So it, we're already making a deal, and he knows it. The applicant knows it, and, and I think he heard the commission and the members of the commission make comments about what they, they can swallow and what they can't, and I'm sure that he'd love to come back for a blanket approval, but I think that doing a partial approval on a runaway project is, uh, is being too charitable, sir. Um, I'm going to agree with Nick. I, I think that we can uh, pull a couple items out and uh, approve the changes as they have been submitted with a couple items to have to come back and be changed. Um, I, I just do not want to be in the position of being a real judge and jury here, David. It's well, it just means that we have to now decide what those things are going to be. Well, I mean, the applicant. Uh, so, I mean, the portico and back and the dormer are, are those two big ones. In other words, number fifteen and number twenty-five. Is there, is there something else that somebody could not support and vote for this? Screens. Screens. And so if we were to say no screens on the front of the building? I would be fine with that. Or they can yeah. also try and put order half screens instead. Yeah. No full screens on the front. So that's three big items there. May I ask a question? Yes, go ahead. Is there an occupancy uh, that's the issue problem. involved? Yeah, that's the problem. But which? Yeah, We're holding up occupancy for this? Well, I mean, I have no idea. It's either occupancy or closing off a mortgage and the bank saying they have to see, you know. Well, I don't that, think we know that yet. We Unless don't, you know the answer, I don't know I, the answer. I believe they have certificate of occupancy. I think they're yeah, waiting to close out the, the site um, bond, the site yeah. approval bond. The site approval bond with the planning board. Yes. So it's really, oh, okay. So and, and what is the immediacy for another month that we can't have them come back and take all our comments here tonight come back with a serious plan and, uh, and present it. Because one thing, the weather's closing and winter's coming, but that's not the point. There are now with the screens three major items, and it seems that we do have kind of a consensus that that is what's giving everyone a heartburn. I think you're just upset because there's 32 items. <laughs> Well, I'm not really upset. upset. I just yes, don't you want. Are. I just don't want this us to have to bail this out. Yeah. Um, well, the, my question is, if we approve most of everything, but not every. Yeah. But uh, not a few. It. It's not going to change their. It's not going to be able to move mm -hmm. their project forward. Yeah, it's right. still going to be un. Unapproved. Oh, they're still going to have stuff to close out. Right. But the obvious implication is, if you've got 32 items and there are 10 that are problematic, and one member has 15, another member has two. Oh. It, it's not easy for the applicant, in my opinion, to know how to address each one of those items coming back. Right. So if there was the ability to have it, maybe the easier stuff that's okay, identified, not necessarily approved, it shortens their list even if it only drops to 31. There's a benefit. Is this discussion enough to help you out? Uh, yes, I mean, I think this is to Martin's point. I think what we were looking for out of this was to understand what are the sticking points here, and where, where things have ended up, and to understand what the you know, how to remedy those uh, moving forward. And so it is helpful if we can, you know, all agree to to take some of these off the list at this point. But from an approval standpoint, if it's simpler for you guys for us to come back and address the items that we've heard you um, raise concerns about. Um, then I, I think yeah. we can do it that way. If so, Nick, I've already asked the question of the board. Yep. <laughs> what are the specific ones that, you know, give you a heartburn so you wouldn't vote to approve? And so I think that's what we need, and I think you probably want to mention the number of, you know, on the sheet as it is. Yes, Margo. I'm, I'm sorry, John. I, I would simply like to make a motion that we um, postpone this administrative approval until the next meeting and give the applicant the opportunity to listen to the recording if need be. But I think everybody has made pretty clear their feelings on these things, and I think we need to move on for other. We do need to move on, correct. So I, I think Martin is right that we should 
have this postponed and let the applicant come back. Can I ask you, do you have a clear idea of where a lot of heartburn lies on this project? I think so. I've been, I've been taking my notes here. I'll go good. back and listen to the recording. Um, again, that, I think that was what we were hoping to get out of this meeting is to understand okay. you know, what the concerns but, were. But um, before we vote, I do have to listen to the public. No, this is an no, It's an admin approval. approval. This yeah. is an admin. Yes. Yeah, second. Mind. Okay, um, we have a second. Second. All right, all those in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. All those against? Very See you good. in November. Thank you. Thanks. One else Seven hand right. Can I just ask? Yeah. So the next meeting, I know you have a meeting in, in a week or two. Um, no, November second. I'm sorry, say again. November second. November second. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Seven Hancock. What was that doing as an admin? <laughs> well, it, look, it's going to come. It's an admin approval. Be, you know, if, it's the other thing. Uh, last thing I want to hear when it comes back is, well, we should send it back out because it's not an admin approval. So how do we want to deal with this in November? Because it does sound like a work session. It's going to sound way more like a work session next month than it did tonight. Yes. Uh, so, yeah. what are we doing here? Yeah, it, uh, it should come back as a work session public hearing. Or, or, yeah, or we do something different and it's a work session with an admin approval. Oh yeah, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's whether it needs to be advertised. Never done that. It sounds think exciting. You're not going to know until we know what they're going to do. Okay. Not going to know what you already. You've got the worst case scenario. I doubt he's going to submit something less aligned with you than what was presented tonight. Okay. So would should this have been a public hearing? So what with do we, what? What do we got here, Nick? Well, Hancock probably what? Probably should have been a public. Hearing. Then let's do a public hearing. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's mm -hmm. what I'm going to do. Uh, seven Hancock. Yeah. This is a condenser behind the house mm -hmm. and I don't believe despite asking the applicant is proposing any type of screening it's very simple submission here it, it, um, this is this is in the behind in, in the back of the house but it is surrounded by neighbors this location yeah, yeah, yeah and I yeah, so is somebody here from Hancock um, so am, am I seeing a shadow or is that a black box? A, well, it's uh, probably a Do you see that? Yeah, there's a black box. It's like a trunk. Sto storage it's a trunk bin. Some there. kind of trunk. So I'm just wondering, is there something there that would not allow them to make a screen? So, um, well, given they're not here, we could approve it with a condition they come back with a screen. Yes. Screen yeah. design. Yes. yes. Certainly. How about that? So yeah. moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. 93, is that it? All right, I'm going to ask who's here for 93 Pleasant. Anybody? Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, okay, add screen. Hang on. Oh. Well, 93 um. Pleasant. Uh, I thought someone might be here to present this, but that's okay. I'll, I'll at least tell you what it is, and we can decide whether yeah, uh, we, see it. we do it. You, yeah, you've seen the application. They are, I believe, seeking just two modifications. One to switch the, the three. The what? Somebody's here? No. Oh, not get it on the screen. Um, thanks, Margo. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. Boom. There we go. That's the building. Yep. What they're uh, <laughs> proposing to do, I believe, are three modifications. One, they want uh, not a small. Uh, request, but I think they want to remove the entire historic wall, number everything, set it aside, do the construction, and then put it back, uh, presumably the way it is today. Uh, that's number one, if I got it right. And number two is the uh, the elevator or stair stairwell overrun is a little bit taller. Yep. And then number three, they're changing the uh, the siding, which I don't even know what for what poly ash was to Hardy. It's Boral. Is that Boral? Yeah. It's yeah. So apparently the Hardy is more fireproof than the Boral? I think it is. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. I didn't know that. I've got Boral and it does burn. Yeah. Really? Yeah. What do you do? Chop it up? I put, put it, it in a fire to test it. Yeah. And it, it. Okay. Um, <laughs> Sounds like it works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, that's, yeah. 
So, you know, concerning the wall, I just um, wanted to remind everybody about four years ago, and I don't have to remind Karen, but um, the wall to the cemetery uh, was taken down and put back in what seems to me uh, a very close proximity to what it was. I can't swear every stone, but... Um, they didn't take it off site, though. Street. No, no, they, they didn't, didn't they take built, it off rebuilt site. They rebuilt it and set it. But this really, taking it off site shouldn't affect anything oh. unless they lose it or something. <laughs> and then? I, I don't know if I can agree with that. I don't know that I can approve the taking off, taking away Why? the whole... It's, it would be, well, an incredible undertaking if they could actually put it back exactly how it is, but right. um, I, I think... There's talented people out as there. You're really messing with the integrity of that historic wall, and it is a very historic wall. Um, mind you that there's going to be large excavators in there digging down for a parking and if they needed to remove a section of it in order for that for access or if it, it falls able, over or is damaged well they would have to protect it heavily yeah. Yeah. If, if i would be if they needed to remove a section yeah. for access i would be a little bit anyone else over here I, I don't have a problem with it. i think there's the prudent way to to do it because uh they're going to have to shore it up if they don't, and and that they're going to leave a condition that's probably a little. Uh, they, they they want to do it right, and and I think this is doing it right, and we just need to make sure that it's properly documented and and uh, that they number it properly, and it goes back the way it uh, right. was taken out. So I can, I can accept that. How do you feel, Dan? Just, just to keep the conversation okay, going, how will we know that? It's, we could take a video of the whole wall. Who will? You could. <laughs> I will. No. I think it's why, part why of don't we stipulate if we go that route, which I'm not suggesting we are, we stipulate that be a requirement prior to any of the stones being removed, it being a copy being provided to the city. I thought they mentioned that. In well, the, I don't know, but right if, even if they mentioned it, let's, if w this was to move forward, let's stipulate that so it doesn't get missed. And they're, they're going to know there's a thorough inspection, not just by Vince, but all of you. Um, yeah. they'll, they'll, uh, you know, uh, I'm not advocating one way or the other, but I think it, I think it can be done as presented. Uh, is there Given the, an insurance policy on it? I mean, just remember what they did to the old fire station. They were going to take it down the fire. Right. Where? The fire yeah, house? Next to the fire station. Oh, that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a little... I think this is different, but... Yeah. Um, but whatever. Well, it's, it's, it's a good know. intentions. I understand. Uh, but can we guarantee there's good intentions? Because, I mean, it, this was a big discussion. We wanted that wall. They wanted to take it down. Anyway, and we fought to keep it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is well, you, it still yeah. historic when you take it apart and put it back together? I mean, I think you're only. What? Well, that's a. There's two. David's got a question, but David, can I just say something to that, or do you want to go? Good. You're raising two questions there. One is, is it still historic? Which I'm not answering. Yeah. <laughs> um, the first one is, how can we guarantee if things go bad that it find its way back here from wherever it's being stowed? You know, it, uh, I'm certainly not going to speak on behalf of the applicant who's not here or anybody representing him, but it would be possible to get surety uh, from the applicant, some guarantee in the form of surety that that, that goes back there yeah. and there's the ability to get the funding needed to put it there. If, if they don't put that back, then, yeah. they're, then that's going to be come up in front of us yeah, of course. And they're not going to get their occupancy permit. So they're going to have a multi-million dollar building sitting there empty because they don't want to put the stone wall back. Uh, yeah. I, I think I that David's disagree. idea, we should look at this and, and it should be photographed all Let's completely, what, totally. Let's hear what David put. Sorry, David, go ahead. Yeah, sorry, David. No, no really, I, I appreciate all the conversation. I, I have some mundane things to mention. One is we just saw an applicant that had good intentions that uh, slipped and fell short of the mark. And most things happen. 
uh, a thing that Martin was intimating uh, is that uh, how much safer will this be in the backyard of some farmer's field in Derry, New Hampshire for a couple of years? Uh, is that a better place for it than uh, excavators swinging their buckets back and forth over the top of it? Um, um, we have, you know, the assumption is that this can be done. I I've nothing to this scale, but I've taken chimneys apart and put them back together with the brick going in the same place. It's it can be done, sure clearly. Be done. Um, and the other is there's nothing really magical about the position of any of those stones in that wall to say that it has some historic event that is related to this stone being right next to that stone. On the other hand, the easiest way to describe that stone wall is the way it is now. So it makes perfectly good sense that we'd want to do that. And it's as a concept, but but it, that it's going to get roughed up. It's like pointing a masonry building. It always looks different after it's been pointed. It always looks different, and it's hard to fight the reaction, the knee-jerk reaction. My God, they've taken my history away by pointing all of this mortar in. It's a stupid thing, I know, but I say those things all the time. Um, I'm sure all of this can What's be done. You? The question is, can it, can we actually, as a group, manage to do that? I think we can. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Margo. My, my concern with the rebuilding of the wall, yeah. even as well document, uh, documented as it is, is you, as David has said, you're never going to get the texture that you had before. You know, it, 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 somebody's going to fix it up a little bit, make it a little bit better, put this stone, you know, just so, and it, and it loses the texture. And so it goes back to this question of, you know, what's historic and what's, re what's restoration versus renovation versus okay. preservation. Margo, are you familiar with power washing? <laughs> John. Somebody could get it in their mind. This is this old stone wall. They could power wash this wall. Hey, I mean, it's got a lot of uh, lichen and it has a lot of, um, dirt and filth on it and it has mortar here and it doesn't have mortar there, they could power wash this without even getting a permit and that would change the texture of the wall. So John, I we're, think that we're, we're all making our own valid opinions mm -hmm. heard. I understand so. that. I being, have my own valid opinion. That's fine. We're not being asked well, let's about just power move washing. The, the so move it to where? Let's vote on it then. I'm sick of listening to it myself. I, I think we need to postpone this because we have no one here to present this. Yeah. So I'll move that we postpone this to next week, just in case. No, it won't be next no? week. It's going to be November. We're not having a meeting next week. Oh, okay, yeah. fine. Yeah. Uh, so November to November. Second. Second? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those against? Aye. <laughs> okay. That was no, that, I right? postponed all of these. Yeah. Postponed. Oh, the stone oh. is <laughs> One of these days, we're going to oh. come up with a meeting where Park. everything shows up. Yeah. You're on, is oh, 40 Pleasant Street, sorry. 40 Pleasant yeah. Street, okay. I'm sorry, okay, I'm sorry. Don't wear a skirt anymore. All right, work <laughs> session. Requested by Custom House LLC owner for property located at 40 Pleasant Street, wherein permission is requested to allow renovations to an existing structure replace windows and new construction to an existing structure add new window canopy system and add exterior lighting and as per plans on file in the planning department said property is shown on assessor map 107 as lot 81 lies within character Three. district 5 Three. downtown overlay and historic districts a question Nick didn't they remove the canopies from this approval didn't I read that? Uh, you probably read it from me, and that's why I asked the applicant maybe what you left the site visit for a minute. Uh, no, we, what, we struck it. Yeah, it was removed for now. Okay, yeah. so does everyone understand that? The awnings have been removed. Martin? Yeah, yeah, okay. The canopy was Introduce yourself. Hi, Hi. my name is uh, Robert Weidemeyer. I'm with uh, Winter Holbin. Um, standing in for Brandon, who is feeling a little ill tonight. Um, oh, no. So, uh, as mentioned, we pulled the canopy from last month's uh, submission um, just because we're, we're more interested in getting the windows and lighting sorted out and moving forward. Um, and we may or may not revisit the canopy just depending on the uh, client's desire. When we get there, when we get there, we'll come back. 
Um, <laughs> so yeah, oh, no. we, uh, <laughs> some some of you guys took the site walk earlier today, so some of this might be a little repetitive. Um, but if we just on the uh, historic context pictures, the next slide here, I just kind of want to point out one thing. Um, just from our view, the if we look at the Pleasant Street um, elevations on this, sort of the at the on the State Street corner there, it appears that there is a door there where there's currently a window. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just bringing that up because at least as submitted, we're looking to make that a door again. Um, so just something to keep in mind. Um, you know, and just some of this is again repetitive from last month. So we've got the existing windows, uh, just a basic uh, ground plane uh, plan. Um, but when we get into the um, existing elevations, we've got uh, a little more thorough of a uh, existing window survey, um, some of which we kind of pointed out on our uh, site walk. Um, I think from the combination of windows and sills and uh, just general window trims that are there, I think we have nine different situations that are happening around this building. Um, ideally, as part of changing out these windows, we're going to get this more consistent uh, look all the way around. Um, so, you know, the, basically the, the uh, existing elevations kind of call out, you know, the window types and sort of the uh, various conditions that we see from each one. Uh, we make it to like AE770 here. <clears throat> This sort of a next one back there. There we go. So it's just a, sort of a summary of the window types that are there currently, and then the various details down at the bottom kind of show us. Um, we believe that the um, sort of the the steel three quarter round steel sill was probably the original uh, condition. Um, however, some of that steel quarter round is either missing or is Part of it's missing. It's all very rusted, um, in pretty rough shape on that end. Um, some of the windows down along the actual street level just have a traditional wood brick mold, which is sort of detail two. Um, detail three, again, it's just there is no trim whatsoever. Um, so yeah, so the difference between two and four is, um, and as somebody pointed out, it looked like at one time they infilled some rear exit doors and those window units actually have a wood sill but the window units right next to it uh, have a stone sill um, and then further along down the like the uh, gosh I forget the name of the road on the opposite side of the Pleasant Street church church along the church, church street elevation uh, you'll go through one stretch where there is a wood three-quarter round that matches the side of the metal. Then you have the metal trim. Then you have a wood three-quarter round that's actually smaller than another metal. And then you, it's just it's a whole menagerie of uh, window detailing when you really get down to, as somebody mentioned earlier, the minutiae of all of this. Um, so basically, Richard's trying to show you guys graphically, hey, you know, there, there's a lot going on on that. Um, and then the next sheet just kind of is some images that just show a little bit and highlight some of that. So ideally, you know, you guys can kind of flip So this uh, trim on the outside is kind of important, and I think it's something that, um, you know, we should discuss as this is a work session. At, so anybody want to jump in to, and does everyone understand what he was saying with the exteriors of the window? So what do you all feel? Uh, I'm going to start with Karen. What do you feel about all of these options? <clears throat> about the windows? Yeah. Um, of course, I, I I like the the iron, but I understand there's an issue with some of those. So I I would hope that you would be able to stay as close to that in profile. Yes. The, the, the goal is it would, further back we get the the proposed detail for that is to basically replicate the, that metal trim. As far as profile, like you said, um, 
and for and the placement for the windows that have the wood sill would the new Probably installations would have the wood sill or would they be able to go to the stone all the window units are a unit so they're going to have a sill on them um, so. which you know again some of it if you just look at the bottom right for example i mean we've got this rusted metal sill that's sitting up on top of you know some sort of on the stone there uh, it's just if you don't keep it within the unit to begin with uh, at least as far as we could tell you know you're not going to have the same weather tightness i'm not quite sure on warranty on these manufacturers but i'm willing to bet they're gonna hedge on that sort of thing um, anyone else so. well i have a question about whether or not you can retain any of the historic and existing um brick molds like you were saying with the the the, the three-quarter round metal and things like that around there or if that is all going to come off as well with, I, I what i'm asking is is no, are the are, are these new window units going to have everything including the trim or are you just getting the new sash and trying to i i, I mean i guess in a perfect world or maybe not a perfect world but you know it, if you're just trying to make it uh something that you're gonna be happy with the the results and know that you're gonna have good ceiling and you know as far as a window replacement taking out the damaged and and um you know the, the damage trim or whatever replacing it with something newer that you you have that control mm -hmm. essentially um you know i i would think that the owner would may not be against trying to restore some of that but it's going to be sort of you're going to get back to a mishmash because some of it's missing so mm -hmm. now we definitely have wood there right um you know some of this you're going to get into it and you think you're going to be able to save it and then you're just like it just starts crumbling yeah we understand um, david margo rich anybody uh, a couple of thoughts. Um, one is is I, the, I still haven't grappled with whether it's important to unify all the window openings or to, to have some be preserved and some be replicated. I sort of think that for the most part anything that's painted doesn't really matter in the larger picture as long as the profiles match what the substrate is. We allow plastic and different kinds of wood uh, uh, another question that I can't help uh, rattle in my head is how can there be so many metal parts and not have more of the stonework broken from the fasteners? But that's a, that's a detail way down the road. But it still puzzles me. Um, mm. And another one is those first floor windows that had been converted into doors back when the post office had their big shed on the back um, and then were re interpreted as windows again mm -hmm. do we want to leave those as in reinterpreted or do we want them to try to improve those also I, I, these are things i haven't I, i'm not settled in my head yet okay has anyone else got any unsettling thoughts here marco rich we prefer settled thoughts actually <laughs> very settling um i mean i'll agree with commissioner adams that um I mean, these windows, if, if it's metal or wood or as long as it is painted in, you know, from street point of view, they're going to look the same. Um, yeah. I don't know. Again, and then again, I'm not the window expert up here. But, um, no. you know, looking at the ones that have been replaced by wood compared to the ones that are metal, I don't have a problem with it. Yeah. I think it's such a huge building and so high that um, yeah. I'm not going to notice. Um, the one thing that I would like to say is that we couldn't help but notice up uh, on the third floor there were two windows that were original, apparently. Just one. One that we could confirm, the other one confirm. we couldn't get into the space to actually look, Same. but we believe it's. They looked very similar. Yeah. And they These are two. in an awkward Maybe, position. Yeah, those two right These there. two right here. So uh, they're not in an office. It it seems that As uh, those, currently configured. Yes. Yeah. Those windows, I feel, should be. 
preserved as one who went on the site walk. I don't know what uh, other people think. They're not in terrible condition at all. They're, you know, these were heavy windows when they were made, and they're still good. <laughs> I mean, if something can be preserved, I definitely think we should, you know, make that effort. Um, especially just to keep it, just to keep it as an example of, you know, just yeah. so it's there and not lost. Yeah. Um, that would definitely I mean, add value. If, if we know, if, you know, for like, example, the one with the stairs behind it, you know, it's not going to, it's not meant to be operable probably anyway, if you keep the stair, if it's going to stay that way on the interior with stairs behind it, but you could easily just put an interior storm on it and it would be set, <laughs> you know, you could keep it. Could. And, uh, I'm still uncertain what's being asked for here. <laughs> we want to change out these windows to something. Are you, okay. <clears throat> You have the you have the molding that's separate from the windows, and each are in very different conditions. What is your strategy towards that? And when it comes to the windows, what are you proposing? New sashes, or a new window? Window unit, new window, window unit, unit, new trim. Okay, so what about the surrounding? The three quarter. That would be brick mold. The, that would be a wood. Big, Custom wood All to of match, yes. Replace completely. Yes. Okay. So, so the big round metal trim also goes away, yeah. even if it's in good shape. Oh, well, see, that's that goes back to some of it does, doesn't even exist anymore. So I'm that has to, to be talking replaced. about the stuff we saw today, which right. does exist. I mean, I, I'm sure that. I mean, we can get into, and maybe there's some stipulation that can be brought up that, you know, if it's deemed to be in good condition, we'll paint it and, and you know, keep the original metal there, you know. But it's, okay. I'm not walking up there to check no, each no. one of those by any we means don't at expect this point. <laughs> so if um, possible, I think what he's saying is if a, a trim is restorable, then they will restore it. Yes, David. Uh, but uh, earlier he said that, uh, he said, sorry, um, that the sills, some of the sub sills are metal also, and his new frame is going to require those to be yanked out. So the only thing that you're going to be able to save is possibly those three-quarter staff beads and the rest of the historic material on those windows that he's touching Yes, is going to be swapped out for new. Yeah. Yeah. May I ask a yeah. question? Yes, please. Um, I was not able to attend the sidewalk. The original, the, win the original windows, is there a way that you can take that as a template and make your recommendation for how the rest of the window should be treated with regard to trim and sills and everything like that? I mean, and in a way, with, we, we And are. come up with one recommendation for all of these is, yeah. there, is there a reason they should be different can that be used as a template that will reference the history but give you a new window and forget whether this one happened to be metal trim now and that one was wood trim now that was somebody doing a hodgepodge of things without a plan right you have the opportunity to make a plan yeah well we are we're presenting we want to go with a Pella reserve line with a Five eighths inch putty mold that is the same width as the original quarter inch. Um, the manufacturer's depth is not exactly what the depth is of the original. Um, certainly on the interior, on the exterior, I again didn't get up there to be able to actually measure it, but I'm sure that the exterior depth is probably a little shallower. Um, but I mean, that's. That's the second half of this thing is showing, hey, these are the windows we want to put in. <coughs> these are the products that we would like to use. No, Here is anything. the mullion we'd like to use. Oh, and perfect. this is the mullion compared to, if we go to, for example. Oh, A7.2. Right here. Yeah. So this is the, so if I understood yeah. what you just said, you, you sorry, John. No, you're, no. you're not using the two windows really as templates because they probably have metal sills, the originals, and all the metal trim. 
and you're proposing to match as best you can, if I heard you correctly, for using the Pella Architectural Reserve Series. Yes. Match as best you can the profile of the windows, those original windows, for all the other windows, and all the trim and sills will be wood, not metal. Yeah. Unless you can save something. No, I mean, that's essentially A7.2 right here, as shown. Yeah. That's what you're saying. So we basically have the two existing grills up top. Yep. Uh, one is of the insulated. Uh, the one on the right, on the upper right, is probably of more interest for you guys because that is the original uh, quarter-inch item. The bottom is, the left is if we go with an aluminum clad wood, that is what the grill profile would be from Pella. And on the right, bottom right, is if we went with uh, a wood window from Pella. Both of those are from their reserve, right? Yeah, Pella Reserve series. Um, and, you know, I mean, if we get our choice, we'd ideally would go with the clad just due to the durability <laughs> and the longevity of it. However, we do understand the historic uh, commission might have other opinions, so that's why we presented the wood also. What's the other half of your presentation? And the doors? Or take lighting. The, well, doors. the lighting, the lighting bit. Okay. Well, do you want to go there or finish? Okay. Or should we finish off these <clears> windows? It's up to you guys. To finish what the windows. What's the group feel? What have we got left to say about the window? Well, I would, where's everybody? I can give my opinion on a 7.2. If anybody wants to hear it, um, <laughs> yes, yes, I I would be happy to approve this um, with the stipulation that that one window that we know is original up behind the stairwell um, be preserved because it does also look like its molding around it is also original. It's all metal and everything. Mm -hmm. So if if that can be preserved. And it doesn't even need to really be fully restored or anything like that if you don't, you know, but that's, you know, it's it's preserved and saved right. as an example um, of what the original was. I'd be happy to see the rest of the windows have this detail of the wood molding um, to, to replicate that. Okay. Um, and I could go either way. I don't know what most people think about the clad. I prefer wood, but at the same time, I know that the wood th these days is not going to last and hold up very well. And so, um, I mean, it almost it does make more sense to use a clad. In terms of scale, these are also okay. very, very large windows. Um, considering the conditions of wood windows that we see these days, I agree completely. Yeah. Um, question would be: Are we what are we giving up by suggesting that maybe this is t an appropriate location for an aluminum clad? window that you've provo you're proposing what 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 are we losing you know the fine print of these things much better than i do is there something else that has to fall away because of that I, losing now I, I feel it's all win <laughs> what it's all win oh right. you're a funny guy I know, you're there not, funny. didn't know there that we go. there we it's, go um, <laughs> But are there any th things that you have to do differently because you're using the, the aluminum clad? clad? No, it, it, it's the exact same product line. Okay. So it's the same profiles. It's the same detail. So there's less wood with a little metal than, yeah, exactly. than metal being added so to the just, same wood. Right. Right? Right. 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 Um, profile should look, still be the exact same. Yeah, if you guys, it's a, it's can, if you look at the next, the next so page here, shows done. both. Again, this is sort of their standard details, but you can see that the upper left is oh, the clad. Yeah. That's all right. right. That's all right. The, Whoa. Yeah. There we go. So the upper left is the clad, and the upper right is the wood. Uh, it was my understanding that these were on display here for a while that just, they were? Pella just took away? I don't know. That's just, I was told we were trying to get a sample brought, but the, the Pella crew was not able I to didn't deliver tonight. But they did say that they had them on display at City Hall. So I don't know. Well, can, well, you guys ask more <coughs> questions. I, I think David raised a really good point from doing the site walk. Those two, those two doorways that were turned into windows whenever, yeah. there's concrete whatever underneath them uh, and maybe a wood panel. I don't even remember what was under the, the big piece of concrete. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just sitting on the big blocks, but the stairs have all been replaced with that handicap ramp and those doors were 
were infilled with concrete, um, why wouldn't it make sense that if you're going to go to the bother of tearing out all the windows and probably most of the trim that's on those openings that you put granite back where the concrete oh, was, sure. mm -hmm. given it's not that big and it would be appropriate. But I'm just, Dave didn't quite say that, but I'm sure that's maybe. Heading that way. But he meant that, I think, or might have. Did you mean that, David? I, it, this is a group of questions that I was heading toward, yes. Okay. okay. I mean, this isn't, as much as I'd like to think, it really isn't the Dave panel. I try to, you know, engage other people in the conversation. Hey, I'm right there with you. I totally All right. get it. All right. um, and uh, <laughs> something that we should bring up right now, no screens. Ah, screens yeah. are in the inside. <laughs> They're on the inside, so. Okay. Okay. You can get inside roll screens. You can have all kinds of fun looking at All the up manufacturers screens. are struggling with that yeah. internal You'll find rolling something. system, but they're all fully aware that we're not putting anything on the outside. Yeah. So the last thing I would just say that's already been said, but if you're willing to save as much of that metal that is possible to save, I think it makes sense that none of it be removed and you come back for admin approval for the windows you want to remove it so everybody can have a chance to look at whether it should be removed because it's not obvious to me looking at it which one you would keep and which one you wouldn't and i think it's not a big ask to have you come back and say you know here are the five we want to ditch because we think it's degraded enough we want to replicate it in wood. Well, let me ask the members of the board yeah. what they feel about that. I would support that. Um, okay. I'd also support the uh, granite coming back as well. The granite? The yeah. sill. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So everybody is, um, that's a stipulation then. If this is a significant building in town, this yep. has got to be it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I realize that, David. And I, I have another question, a picky question about these windows. Yep. Because we don't have a pocket here. Is, does this one, and it looks like the wood profile, this is where it might be different, um, is that the wood profile doesn't show that it's got some sort of little exterior tiny frame that goes all the way around it to hold screen. screens or anything like that. Um, and so that's what I'm hoping not to see where, do you know what I'm talking about? Like how new windows often have a, a, an exterior little. Yeah, well, we specifically tiny. chose the profiles that did not have that because we don't have screens I'm, on the outside. Great. <laughs> and I'm just seeing it because it looks like that in the aluminum clad, and that might just be because those are four screens. So, great. That was. That's I, don't, just I don't see it there. Ha, huh, good, good catch because it's there. Yes. They are white in the drawing and not squiggly line like the wood cord. So I think that's the message. Well, um, there is something else that um, used to be brought up by Mr. Rawling and that concerned, um, I'm not sure about this particular brand. This is probably must be the premium uh, brand of Pella, but um, the, the jam liners, the actual guides that the sashes go up and down on these, number one, cannot be white, cannot be beige, <laughs> if you know what I'm saying. No, no. I, yeah. I understand. So uh, I have to verify, but I would, they would assume have be... with the price point of this that they're going to match the color of the window. Okay. But, yeah. you know, that's... Well, that's what I'm thinking. But then I've seen um, there's a building over in Newcastle that is so painful. It's right on Main Street. And all I can see is the white jam liners on the black... Replacement. Well, windows. let's hope the windows aren't white because white white's the the cheaper window. Uh, uh, what color are the windows? Not white. So they're either <laughs> are they black? Probably black. I mean, black. I mean, black. this is an impregnated product. I think you and as Dave said, yeah, probably one of the top buildings in Portsmouth needs mm. to be done well, and yeah. So can you stipulate that yeah. so that it, it it's not something that'll escape? Yes. So I, th I think you go with the black window with Process. with uh, matching jam liners. Yes. And if they decide to change it, they have to come back. So I guess we're ready to move well, we, on. The lights, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so. If it's got so. What? The light. You want to do the lights? 
I, one last oh, question. Sorry, so the old doors, you're turning back into windows and you're putting granite underneath. You had also said something on our walk about perhaps putting another new door. Right, that was the door that I pointed out mm -hmm. on the historic photo there. So um, depending on what we're do currently doing studies on what those upper floors want to be, uh, depending on what that use ends up being, it just for life safety purposes uh, makes sense to actually recreate that stair tower again um, where it got cut off. And if we do that, then the logical spot would be to make that a door again. And you'll come back yeah. with that decision. Absolutely. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. Just on that point, we, we noticed while we were out there looking at that potential door location here that the original photo that's at the beginning of this thing yeah, it does show the door, but it also shows the door dumping right. into this big grate right. that you'd lose a foot almost in between the rails. So I can't believe if you were to reintroduce that, that you wouldn't have to change that condition on the surface of the landing, which makes it a more complicated change because it won't resemble this beyond the door opening because that black line that's symmetrical going across for the window wells to the basement to bring light down probably can't stay there in today's building code outside that door. So hopefully you don't need the door, right? Um, I think the client would agree. <laughs> we'll see what the code says. Okay, um, so what else have we got here? The lighting? So, yeah, I guess... Yeah, so we also presented the, the lighting, uh, which again, we had um, two different fixtures and I think we got some um, pictures for you guys. Um, our lighting rep has put two different fixtures on the wall over top of the uh, restaurant. That was today. Uh, today, just during the walk, we had the four inch uh, LED strip um, up lit so you can see that. Um, which is sort of the first picture is showing that strip and how it's sitting on the ledge um, at the second the level there. Strips. Right on there, one. Oh, so right the, one. The, next, the next page kind of shows that light at night, how it's just, we're more interested <laughs> right now on just the too. coverage on it and the color just that uh, it presents. <clears throat> I believe that one's a 3000 K uh, color on that. The next is showing the fixture that we have in the package, which is more of a spotlight, and is, uh, I believe, uh, the rep said that's a 3,500K, so it's a little, we're getting a little more into the blues, a little less out of the, uh, um, you know, a little less warm, but that's still a fairly warm color overall. Um, just to kind of, yeah, it was more represent, you know, to give you an idea of how that's going to look. Um, as you can see, at least from those pictures, we're going to need to do something on for the third floor wall, uh, whether that's from above down or uh, replicating essentially what we got on the second floor where we're out on that ledge shooting up um, somewhere along those lines. Um, yeah. Kind of leaning more towards the linear just All because it uh, yeah. has less. Uh, hot spots compared to that spot that's being shown there. So what are you looking for approval for? You don't have your plan for the third floor, right? Well, I mean, at this point, we're the main thing we want to get approved is the windows. So we can get those ordered just because the quote's getting yeah. ticking by. Yeah. Uh, the lights, we got the rep to come in and put those out and you know if you guys want to prove hey you can do strict lights well, thank and, and you. have at it it will be <laughs> yeah. more than happy but we also understand right. that you know um, there might be a little bit more you want on that there one. is something in the beginning of the meeting about the quasi judicial nature of our board yeah, so, so. You know, just take it easy could you do a <laughs> mock-up of these lights well, yes. this is, this is. i would just so, it's, are these it's lights incomplete. supposed to be on the on the ground on the on the uh, steps? So, where are they going to be located? They're basically going to be illuminating the upper two stories. Um, so they're going to be at the the top, of, top of the first story. They're going to illuminate up. They're they're not sitting on the ground like they're not on the ground. That's okay. not on the ground. The okay. picture there is actually on the it's on the it's on the roof okay. that you're seeing there, but that's actually on the second. 
All right. Level any, right any there. Any downlight at the second? Well, that's the thing is that if we were able to do that. We weren't able to get in the attic just to do a quick mock up to kind of show. Okay. But you know, the original thought was to get up, basically around maybe the facial line, shoot down. Um, but there was also the thought of possibly going just essentially third shooting back so up Martin, again. They're, they're shown here. They're shown here on yeah, the submission. Yeah, we are showing, and those are the, the bottom spots, and on the top. which again are a little, they're a little hotter than what we um, kind of want. I think we want just sort of a softer glow, ideally. And one more question. Are you talking about all four sides of the building? For sure, three sides, um, probably all four, actually. I mean, you know, the historical portion of it, it would, Write that down. you know. Four sides. <laughs> four sides. <laughs> Um, if it's Dave, not four David sides, we'll come with. back. David. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I'm a, a little concerned, as you can imagine, about uh, lighting this thing like it was a Broadway show. And so uh, the, the puck unit, the high-intensity puck unit, to me, is, is too dramatic a piece of lighting. No, I, I'm not all that bothered, I guess, at least in this photograph, what I see of what happens from the four-foot fluorescent-like unit that you're using. And I'm more of a fan of the 3000K than the 3500. Um, you can imagine I'm also going to uh, jump up and down saying I, I want to see nothing. All the metal is going to be stainless. Um, because if there's a building in town that's being torn apart by a history of iron fasteners being drilled into it, uh, it's this building, everywhere you look on the building. It's, I, I'm pleased it's that you see that as humorous. It's not to funny it. to me. Um, I also wonder about what lighting in the corners of the third floor is going to look like visually during the daytime. Uh, but I, at, this, at the moment, I, I, I could easily see myself voting for the fluorescent units on the second floor ledge. Yeah, those are actually LEDs. They're just long. I, I understand yeah. they're not fluorescent, but they're very much like a four-foot yeah. fluorescent tube. Yeah. So. I agree. Those are better. Yeah. I think we I think the, uh, the tube versus the spotlight yeah. is... is does it is a lot softer? Nice. Does it make sense given there's more lighting you're going to be adding than just the bottom light going up that you have your lighting person show us actually what you want to do uh, in a complete form without going around all the building, but at least top and bottom so people can see it before they're yeah, guessing they understand it. I would have to talk to the lighting Does guy that make sense? on big... just the logistics of that. And well, the I should owner. be able to do that online. They should be able to or we can just have John come over and do it. Just... Um, I would like to see a complete mock-up. Um, you know, I've seen you've shown us the lighting lights facing up, uh, but I would like to see them how they appear going down as well. Um, I know I've received some emails, people concerned that light will shine in their windows or shine in their homes, but it'd be nice to see and show them and just make sure. So does it make sense to pull the lighting out right now? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So windows. Yeah. Right. So um, we're looking at the windows at this point. We had three. We have. We have four potential stipulations, stipulations that at least I wrote down. Okay. Do you want me to recap them? Yes. Why not? No know. specific order. Uh, Reagan did say preserve the original window. It, you know, maybe, maybe you, you want to modify that to be the two original windows <clears throat> nobody including the applicant thinks it's not original mm -hmm. and they're side by side and they're the only two windows on that elevation on the third floor but yeah so maybe two windows uh, item two retain all the the, the metal uh, trim whatever it's called uh, and come back for administrative approval to remove any of it so we have a chance to see what you're removing before it's removed. Number three, that the concrete wall units under the in window inserts on Church Street be replaced with granite um, in the two locations we saw the door openings. And then number four, that the windows, uh, the, the Pella Architectural Reserve Series that is aluminum clad be black uh, with black jam liners, with jam liners to match the window. I'm concerned about the stipulation about the replacing with granite. Yep. Just because it's not really what they're here for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they're, so, well, I don't, um, 
I don't know. I'm just. They're here for more, and you're not doing that. I don't know. It, the window's coming out. If yes, and that's but, a I mean, to I guess potentially the, reuse. Yeah, in the in the spirit of debate, the client could just say, "Well, I'm not going to replace those two windows." Then yeah. they could, and they'd come back and ask for that modification. Yeah. Um, how does everyone feel about the stipulation? One last question. Are you removing the door to the um, can uh, we please? fire escape? Can we please? Pardon me? <laughs> can we please? Right now we're keeping it just because it is a means of egress. Ideally, we want to get rid of that. Yeah. Right. And, and go back that, to the That's window? next to the two original windows. So what would you put in a replacement window or try to... We would just, yeah, Here. same window units going around everywhere else. Are going to replace yeah. them? Hence the requirement for a stone infill. What? Uh, um, yes. Yeah. Required for stone infill on We're the back. Talking about that. Oh, the. The yeah. third, third floor. floor. Talking about this, David, up here. Oh, the third yeah. floor. I'm sorry. I yeah. thought I was talking about the downstairs yeah. Uh, yeah. door. Yeah. Sorry. No. Never mind. Yeah. Okay. I mean, the client may be all for it. It's just, you know, it's one of those things where. Yeah, I'm really good at spending other people's money, but I mm. probably shouldn't just yeah. willfully spend his money without having the discussion with him on it. Well, That's it certainly it. could be stipulated if people agree with it here that that emergency access door on the third floor could be replaced with a replacement window to match all the pillow windows on the rest of the building if your yeah. client agrees to do that or wants to do that. And if they don't, they don't. So you don't have to come back and ask for that. There again, when that... Um fire escape is removed it's going to lead all kinds of little rust mm -hmm. lead shields and everything else in there matches the motif of all well, the other maybe stone it doesn't around need to there. be removed even if the door is not a door is that part of our decision well he's not asking for the fire escape to be taken off so it's it's not coming so off. it's just going to sit there yeah, yeah, well, yeah with a window well, well somebody could go out the window and get yes. down well, especially That's those fine. Um, so I'm going to ask uh, if anybody in the public would like to comment about this building, these changes. Uh, doesn't seem to be anyone. No one online. Mm, I'm working on it. Wait. No. Okay. So I'm going to Sorry. close the public hearing and uh, for a motion with the stipulations we have. Please mention our guidelines. Okay. Motion, anyway. All right. Um, I move that we approve this application for only the windows. Not the, the we'll come back to us with the lighting plan. And the door. Um, right. And the door. Yeah. That, um, what are the, the okay. solutions uh, that? Okay, preserve the that, two original windows. Preserve the two original windows that we use the clad um, window oh. tele Black. option. Um, Black uh, color with jam liners to match. Or at least, yes. Or no screen. No screens. No screens. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and that. The, the retention concrete. of all the metal staff beads, unless you. you have a problem with some, and those are going to be handled in an administrative right. manner. Yeah, they should all be preserved and reused unless you come back and demonstrate they're, they're not reusable. Sure. And then we still have the, the concrete <clears throat> wall lock um, under those two former door entryways off Church Street to be replaced with granite as for discussion. Yeah. If the motion maker. Okay. I'll second that motion. All righty. So uh, um, this, I'll just say this, um, I mean, it does a lot. <laughs> it, conservation and enhancement of property values um, and has relation to historic and architectural value of the existing structure. All right, very good. So anybody else want to make a comment on the second or anything? I'll just ask for a vote. All do those need, in favor? Do we need to stipulate that that uh, emergency door 
may be oh. replaced with well, yes, I, a I, window. I thought you mentioned that. I didn't read it. I mentioned it. Uh, okay. So you're so right. That, uh, that you may replace that. it with a Pella architect, the window that's proposed. Up on the third floor. On the third floor. Okay. That's good. Which, which does not include right. removal of the fire escape. Right. So we've got the stipulations. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Against? So you have your approval. Your window windows. changes. Thank you. You're welcome. Come on, spend easy. a little money. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you could say. I mean, I can spend other people's. It's just, All right, okay. Uh, custom house, custom house. So are we at the city of Portsmouth owner for property located at zero Marcy Street, Prescott Park, wherein permission is requested to allow the partial demolition of an existing structure, the rear portions of the Shaw warehouse, the relocation of the remaining structure closer to Marcy Street, and renovations to an existing structure, complete uh, exterior modifications as per plans on file in the planning department. Said property is shown on assessor map 104 as lot 5, lies within the municipal and historic district. Okay, who's here to present this? Please introduce yourself. Good evening, commissioners. Uh, my name is Joe Almeida. I'm the uh, facilities manager for the city of Portsmouth. Um, know that this was meant to be a work session public hearing. Um, I wasn't sure if we wanted to go to the table for the work session portion or if we wanted no, just to just present from here. Very good. We can do that. Uh, with me tonight um, is uh, Cassie Bethany from West End Sampson, uh, Ted Talukian from Talukian Talukian Architects, uh, Carlos Guzman, also from that architectural firm. Tom Watson, the chairman of the Blue Ribbon Committee, is also with us here in the front row. Um, as um, most everyone knows, we are going through a uh, major master plan project for Prescott Park. It has been uh, broken into phases. Uh, this phase 1A project is ready for permitting and approval. Um, what we're going to present to you tonight is um, very similar to what we showed you in February. Um, the project is very complex and the, the spacing between meetings is, um, is it, it takes a while because not only are we doing a lot of architectural work in the um, in phase 1A, but we're doing a huge amount of resiliency work as well in the subterranean and, and underground, underground drainage and so forth. So the, um, the bulk of what we're going to present tonight has all to do with the Shaw as, as you uh, read in the description, uh, Chairman Wyckoff. Um, however, I want us to remain focused on, on the goals for tonight, which are uh, the discussion around the demolition of what's referred to as the lean-to and the garage, the two smaller portions behind the actual uh, original Shaw warehouse. Um, number two is the relocation of the Shaw building uh, further um, away from uh, and out of the flood, uh, flood zone towards Marcy Street. And three, um, the full exterior uh, renovation Due, uh, due to the needed structural reinforcement uh, prior to Shaw building relocation. Um, as all of us know, we have here a very special you know, waterfront building that has been here for uh, quite some time. The two additions are, are lesser in um, um, architecture, a, a historical significance. Um, as we told you last time, we're moving this forward in order to uh, not only we're lifting the building up a few feet, um, if you're if you're at the park now and you know where Liberty Lawn is, where the um, Liberty Pole is, and, and the, the the gardens in the in the summer, the height of that garden is basically being extruded across the park um, to um, to eliminate the flooding that we've been experiencing there for years, and it's very significant. And I'm sure you've heard the Strawberry Bank is also fighting flooding uh, that they haven't seen before, and this project comes be with it um, a huge amount of um, study. Um, around um, climate and um, the potential for flooding in this area. So um, the responsible thing to do in order to save Shaw is to lift it up with the earth as we, and, and move, it, move it further away from the water. Um, also knowing that we selected a very specific distance that we're, we're proposing to move the building forward um, um, due to the fact that um, there are future plans that hopefully will come to, will come to realization of an addition on the back of the building. Um, that addition would house all the modern amenities that a building needs in the way of electrical rooms, elevators, restrooms, kitchenettes, uh, mechanical rooms. 
we want to keep all of that out of Shaw, and you know that that addition would serve would serve the park and the community. We we're we're not prepared to talk about the the exact size of the addition, the architecture of the the addition. We're really focusing on getting approval to move Shaw, um, and then come back later to have that discussion. Um, with all that being said, I will introduce or I will allow the team to come to the podium and, and present uh, again in this work in this work session forum. Um, so ask away. We are we're prepared to answer any questions you might have. We are very familiar with all the details that are going on to the building. Um, so we're ready for any questions you might have. Uh, Cassie. Thank you for your time tonight. Um, Nick, if you could advance advance. And Joe spoke to the slide, so just to advance one more. Um, I am a landscape architect and I'm a project manager from Weston Sampson. And um, I'm just helping you to orient yourself to the actual area that we're talking about. Joe did a great job with the details, um, but we looked at, we, we have an entire master plan that we looked at um, and that was adopted in 2017 and amended in 2020. Um, we then, uh, phased the project and looked at a phase one area, which is the dashed yellow line. And we have since um, reduced that size to focus more closely on the water street, which is essentially the parking area and driveway and the Shaw relocation. I yep. just want to point out for the members here that the, the presentation you gave me today that's on the screen is a little bit different than what they were given. So yes. they need to know that. So oh, they're not looking for you. what you're talking about. So this is the one change is that this slide was moved to this um, location so that I could speak first and then give no Ted the floor for the remainder of the slides. Um, so the area that is outlined in the darker yellow is the phase one area that Joe referred to. And the work that's included in there um, that's of focus tonight is the Shaw relocation and the demolition of the garage and lean-to, and really the particulars around the exterior improvements, repair, and renovation to the Shaw. Um, in addition, Joe had mentioned, and, and I'll just reiterate that we are elevating the Shaw, we are elevating the Water Street um, <coughs> driveway and parking area, and we're connecting the sheaf to the Shaw, we call that the bracket, and it really becomes a, um, a, a celebration of the, his, the the buildings as they ha were originally intended to be in this line, um, and they will all be on the same plane now. And then underneath that, all of the subsurface stormwater and drainage tied up, tide gates and such that are required to improve flooding will happen underneath the uh, Water Street area, um, and that becomes our, our way to mitigate, um, in this portion of the park, our way to mitigate the, the climate resiliency challenges that were faced at Prescott Park. Um, so I am happy to answer any site-related and engineering questions, but I'll pass the floor to Ted to speak more about the Shaw. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Ted Talukian. I'm an architect uh, from Talukian Talukian. It's good to be here again this evening. Um, with the risk of not reiterating what both Joe and Cassie said, maybe I'll start with this slide, which is really, you know, why are we uh, seeking these things to demolish and relocate and do the exterior improvements to the Shaw Building. And they're really centered around two things that were brought up. Is one is around um, moving the Shaw Building into a higher ground, uh, certainly around the uh, flood projections that have been mapped for the site. And the second reason has been our work with the PPAF, the Prescott Park Arts Festival, and the opportunity to re relocate uh, the stage and uh, the trailers to a new location that can allow the lawn, as shown in the master plan, um, to be more uh, centrally located within the park. And next, please. So I'm going to walk you through a few uh, three-dimensional diagrams. The first is just showing uh, graphically the first uh, request, which is to demolish the lean-to and also the garage and relocate the Shaw itself. Uh, we're moving at approximately 80 feet. Uh, and raising at approximately three to four feet to an elevation of 10.7 feet. Uh, with that uh, relocation, we'll be looking to do exterior improvements uh, along the Secretary of Interior standards 
and mothballing the interior uh, to those standards as well. Next, please. Part of that relocation will allow to within the master plan as shown in the landscape plan is to relocate in a future phase um, the stage and the trailers uh, such that the lawn could be more centrally located. Next. And as Joe pointed out, in a future phase, not to be presented, but just to put context on the aspects of the overall uh, vision, is to then look to relocate those trailers and support uh, structures into a new addition that could also include utilities and accessibility and those other demands that are a part of the building. Next, please. So what we did is a part of this process, uh, we, we drew the building, we crawled around the structure itself, um, we examined the details and, uh, throughout the structure. Next, please. And we brought our team of engineers and architectural members. I know Carlos to my left spent a lot of time in the sub-basement area looking through a number of details, encountering some of the wonderful <laughs> albino spiders that exist down there. And uh, we were able to, at that point to really document it and understand at a, certainly a limited level that you gain through exploratory um, work, um, the state of the foundation system itself, as well as the post and beam structure. Uh, and what our team of engineers determined is that, you know, there's certainly some rot that's existing throughout the post and beam structure that needs a lot of repair uh, to the structure before it can be relocated. Next, please. This is a drawing of the elevation. It's color coded to give you a sense of some of the things that we're looking at in the immediate term before our proposal is to relocate the Shaw. Uh, essentially the yellow cross hatch is the post and beam structure itself and there is a good bit of rot that's relocated in different areas along that and our structural engineer is recommending to remove all of the sheathing to get to that uh, post and beam structure and to repair it as needed as well as repair the sill plates and then to uh, resurface that uh, with uh, a plywood skin that will provide additional structural and lateral support to the structure. Uh, the roof will also be, all this, the finishes will be removed similar to the exterior where uh, it can be resheathed with plywood uh, prior to a new roof finish. And we're seeking to salvage some of the existing granite uh, base in order to uh, have an option to reuse that in the new foundation system. Uh, next, please. This is a section diagram uh, showing uh, some of the improvements uh, in the cross-section uh, manner. Uh, in yellow is the post and beam and the roof structure that will be repaired, the new surfacing of the exterior skin, and then the needle beams that will be uh, used to lift the structure. I want to point out that all of the, exist all of the existing structure will be repaired and stabilized prior to lifting the building itself uh, and then into its new location. Next, please. So with that, prior to, uh, you know, I should say after the stabilization of the structure and, and uh, along with relocation, uh, we are also recommending an exterior renovation as per the design guidelines listed on the slide and an interior renovation that will include mothball standards until future uh, phases of work are commenced for the interior and that's obviously not a part of the the application is the future interior renovations as well next please so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to walk you around the building uh, with some of the um, minor changes and some of the the finishes that we're looking to do around the exterior of the building and we're pairing that drawing with an elevation to put some context between the two uh, this is the first slide, which is the west elevation. Uh, I'm just going to sort of point out the west door will remain. Uh, we're looking to remove some of the wood panels that exist along the edges. All of the shingles and the painted wood corner boards were removed in order to do the structural improvements. Uh, because some of the headers are, are of the, I should say, the post and beam and the headers along the windows are very close to that structure, it's anticipated that the windows will have to be removed in order to repair the post and beam structure. And so they will be replaced with new painted wood windows and casings and sills that will be generally to match the existing. And they exist in different patterns of six over six at levels three and two, and I believe nine over six at level one. Uh, next, please. 
I should point out the rake boards and as well as the corner boards and the trim would be also to match existing. Now this is a section detail through the base of the foundation detail itself. This is the future foundation detail. Uh, what's color coded here in blue is an option to reuse the existing stone and treat it as a veneer uh, rather than a pure load bearing condition that was in the original condition. And that is mostly due to the structural stability uh, as our engineer is showing. And so there'd be a concrete steel reinforced foundation system with a granite uh, exterior. Uh, with the needle beams and the relocating of the structure, uh, the sill plates will allow to be repaired. Um, they'll be able to be stabilized and connected back to the structural foundation system. And uh, a new flooring system will be able to be uh, resurfaced uh, to match the existing on the interior in order to be stabilized back to the foundation system. Next, please. This is looking at the north facade. Uh, we basically much very similar to the western facade with the uh, new corner boards and trim and windows, et cetera, that would match existing in terms of their overall aesthetic. Oh, I should also point out that we'll be uh, presenting to use uh, the Green Mountain window system, uh, which we understand is something that the board has seen in the past. And we've actually mm -hmm. seeked uh, uh, to, to gain a, a sample that we could show you if that's something that's necessary. Uh, on the north facade, uh, we'll be looking to remove the existing door and provide a new window in its place. And that's a photograph that actually shows a drip flashing above the door, which we believe uh, may have been once an original window. Mm. Next, please. On the south facade, uh, the, the two bathroom doors will be removed mm. and a new window will be put back in its place. And we're going to propose to remove the fire escape and ladder system that was uh, added to the building at a later point and change those doors back to windows. And the reason for that egress change is the further, the future projections of the building with the addition would take into account not only accessibility but also egress uh, for the future addition, which is, which is noted is not a part of this application at this point. Next, please. And then lastly, the east facade. <clears throat> uh, it's a corner shot that shows, you know, the window slightly above the lean-to. Um, the intent here would to be to, uh, to provide new, larger painted wind windows in those locations, to provide more light into the interior, and to reuse the opening that exists on the east side, which is at the first floor, and provide a new door to match uh, the west elevation door itself. Next, please. And this is just to conclude the slide, which is a larger, more diagrammatic uh, vision of the overall, the overall complex. Uh, maybe a couple other details just to point out. If you just go back a few slides, I just want to just point that out, are the roof system and the gutters and leaders, which are in the application. Uh, we'll be proposing wood gutters that are lined, as well as leaders that will be encased in wood uh, to, uh, to match some of the historic intent of the details that are there right now. And overall, I think uh, there's probably some other details that I'm sure there are questions on, but happy to answer any other questions you have. Yes, sir. Um, you have a detail on a window. Um, yeah. It, it's one e exemplary window, I imagine. Um, it, 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 the casings on it seem kind of narrow to me, but um, I'm obviously not sitting in front of your building with a measure. I assume you're going to uh, specify uh, casings widths and thicknesses that match the existing? Absolutely. No, absolutely. I noticed the existing windows have bands on them. There are no bands shown in this model. Um, are you going to put bands on these also? Uh, well, first off, I should point out, based on the discussion that I was observing earlier, the existing windows uh, have storms and screens that will not be a part of this system, uh, just to point that out. And the bands, can you be more descriptive on the bands? Small moldings that run around oh, the perimeter the trim of the window bands. opening? Yes. Yeah, the shingle, yeah, of course, that's in the drawing. It's as we not on write. the drawing of the windows, why I ask. Um, um, okay. Well, it's, it doesn't seem to be on the drawing of the window as I look at it on this screen. It, it, just to, Matt, to answer the question, yes, that will be. And, the, and the side, your answer is probably going to be the same as far as the sill detail. Yes. The sill thicknesses, I probably don't need to tell an architect this, but um, sill thicknesses sort of, in many respects, date the building. 
Absolutely. And, and uh, we've gone through all different sizes over mm -hmm. the last 300 years or so, but the modern window sills seem to be less than an inch thick, which is indicative of today, but has nothing to do with the history of this building. Exactly. Now, from the, from the DOE report that was provided by the state back in 2011, those windows were uh, certainly not original. We'll be looking to put back an historic sill. I understand exactly what you're referring to. And the, the sort of newer windows are very thin sills. These would be historic sills that would have a deeper profile to be more substantial. 18 was 16 on this building? I think it's 1812. 1812, probably closer to three inch. Yeah. If you look at detail F, which is on our application A3.0, it shows the deeper, more pronounced uh, historic sill. Um, but I think we can provide further information around that when, if you're seeking a particular dimension. In your drawing of the west elevation of the building, of that yes. other, ga other gable end, the free gable end? Um, the west side, a, yes, sir. Yeah. Pardon? Are you saying, suggest, are you talking about the west or the east? I'm sorry. Just the west? The west, yeah. Um, in one of the drawings, it shows a portico of some sort having been built there. Can you that you're proposing to build on it? Can you Is go back to the west facade, Nick, please? What are you talking about? Uh, which one's the west? Uh, one more Can back. You, there? Nope, one more, at least. Two more, one more. That right there, yeah. Uh, that portico. Uh, portico. Not, okay, that's the photograph of what's there now, but in terms of your proposal, because that's uh, really what you're talking about. We, I'm, I don't believe we're proposing a portico. Uh... I'm actually okay. certain we're not. But. Um, in the and I don't know where the drawing, the numbers are in the drawings to refer to. Okay, I have a number six shows a big green lump where the the lawn is. I see oh, this is number six. Oh, that's what you're saying. Six. Yeah. Oh, and the master plan, uh, sir, is that what you're saying? You know, honestly, it's just a plan that was given to me. Okay. Yeah. I can't tell one from okay. another. It says six on it. So the way we'd see that? It's it's got the future phase with the stage. The bottom side. right is the numbers. Which one? Oh, oh go up. You gotta go way back. Like 17 or something. All right. Yeah. Okay. I, I understand. So in that's not a part of this application. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Nice so try. in the if you go back two slides, Nick, please. Oh, you got me on that one. Yeah. <laughs> Is that that is yeah like, no no this is just showing the larger vision which is again not a part of this application that has something to do with an airlock which is a possibility but not something we're considering at this point. I might comment about made. that if if you're interested. This is a work session, so I can just have an yeah, opinion. Please. Yeah. Um, uh, it seems like not the facade that I'd want to show toward the street. Okay. Where everyone goes by, not just your patrons. Absolutely. Thank you. If I could, before we leave David's questions, the um, very good observation about the, uh, the window detailing, and we had this conversation just two days ago about the shingle mold itself. If you do look on um, uh, sheet A3.00, the window details, it talks about, I mean, it, it's clear that the, um, I got it. I got yeah, it. no, I was the, shingles, the shingle plane versus the casing plane, David, you're, yes. I'm sure you're well aware of this, a building of this age, the casing is, the shingle face is proud of the casing, mm. and the shingle mold has to go around the perimeter of the casing in order, stop for the in, side. Order to, in order to cover up the butt ends of the shingles. We plan on putting them right back the same exact way with, with all new wood. Yeah. And, just, and just because I want to make sure that you feel comfortable that we had wrote, written in on detail A on that A30 is that we had referred to it as a typical one by painted wood casing and molding to match existing, and that is the band that you're Excellent. Okay, yeah. so we've got that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other questions here for, for city people? I'll, I'll wait for the questions. If I could just point one thing out, when we talk about the, rate, the the lifting of the building, I realize we didn't we didn't mention it. And this is a great slide to to elaborate on it. The floor le the first floor level of Shaw aligns perfectly now with the the level um, of shape. Closer to the mic. You've got yeah. to speak closer to the mic. That one there, for instance, you're not getting through. How's this? This one? Oh, that's really too much. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the first floor level of Shafe. Um, will be almost, is it exactly aligned? Is it the same exact elevation? It's close. It's, uh, it's the shape is 10 and the shape of uh, the will be 10. So in, basically the floor levels of both these buildings are going to be the same, the first floor level. So it's not going to 
we're not t we're not towering over um, Chief um, with Shaw now, even though it is a much larger building. And remember, all of the ground is coming up with it, so there won't be a, um, a noticeable difference in yeah. height when you're standing on grade. And actually. Uh, would you mind, uh, Nick, just going back to the section, if this is helpful? Back to what? Um, the detailed section at the foundation. Uh, so forward. Uh, is that back or forward? Uh, forwards, please, yeah. yeah. One, mm -hmm. one more, I think. Yeah. Here? One more. One more. I bet it's more, huh? One more. Don't say one more. Just one more. That's it. <laughs> so, yeah. So there's a, one of the things we'll, right now, I think, Everyone knows this. When you look around the perimeter of the building, the grade is moving around, and it's actually within eight inches, sometimes coplanar, with the wood shingles, which is dangerously close to the sill, which is right. causing rot. And when you're in the in the in the basement space, as Carlos could attest to, you'll see that there has been some sill plate replace, replacement. And so what we're doing is going to be really working to a, a much better situation where we can expose the stone, right, get to an adequate dimension of at least a foot or eight inches at a minimum, and that'll allow the, the, the wood uh, sill plate to sort of stand, you know, more uh, protected against the elements over time. So um, I've got a question I, I noticed um, looking at this cross-section of the foundation. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I see something on the inside of the sill uh, mm -hmm. with an apparent bolt fastener going into maybe the old sill. Is that what it is? What I don't see is uh, fastening the sills to the foundation, because what we would hate to see is the Shaw floating off its foundation. <laughs> yeah, we, we're definitely uh, not interested in that either. So there is a, it's, it's probably harder to read and I can understand where the question came from. If you see the diagonal line, if you blow that up, yes, thank you, and you see the diagonal bar, there is gonna be a bar that's gonna run through the sill and be bolted down, and that's what that diagonal line is embedded in the in the the stone and concrete. So the granite will be uh, reinforced and connected to the concrete foundation, and the bars will be connected and looped together. So yes, to answer your question, the building will be held down so to the foundation. So it will be held down to just the cement, or, or no, to the structure itself, integrally tied and connected. And the granite also to the foundation system as a whole. As a whole. Very good. And just your second question was the additional sill plate. Yeah. That may have to do, that's a provision, because it may have to do with the extent of damage uh, of the sill plate and to stabilize that. And that's just a sort of an additional optional detail that may have to occur. Okay. All right. So we've got the Shaw being lifted and moved 80 feet. Uh, would anybody in the public like to speak about this project? <clears throat> Good evening, Elizabeth Bratter, property owner, 159 McDonough Street. This all sounds great on paper. As someone who owns property on both sides of the mill pond, the most important thing to remember is that the Piscataqua River is tidal. And you can't really fool Mother Nature, which is proven by the Bartlett Street Railroad trestle, which often floods, even though many engineers have decided this is the way to go. My concern is um, the flood zone level is AE2, I'm sorry, is AE8. And they're bringing it, AE8 means that you need to have at least nine feet to protect whatever you're doing. And they're bringing it up to 10, which is a cautionary thing to do. But my biggest concern is if you look at the flood maps that I gave you um, when you receive them, they have these beautiful blue areas and they show that the Water Street area is exactly what they said, it's going to flood. But then if you look across the street at Prescott Park, it's also going to flood. So here's where my concern comes up, is we're gonna spend a lot of money, we're gonna rebuild the Shaw, we're gonna move it 80 feet closer to another flood zone we're gonna raise Prescott Park up by 10 feet. We're gonna put some kind of fancy drainage in there. I'm sure we'll talk about that at TAC. Um, but then it's gonna sit higher than Strawberry Bank, another very historical area. 
So I'm not really sure what's going to happen in regards to that, but I think it's something that needs to be talked about. This is the historic district commission. Strawberry Bank is the historic area, just to put it out there. Um, the other thing I would like to talk, since we're going to talk about rebuilding the structure, is that a lot of the buildings in Portsmouth, I've been to many of these meetings, just so you know, I go to all the meetings for everything I'm interested in. Um, and that's the removal of fire escapes because we don't need them anymore. But to me, those pieces are a big, it's kind of like having a phone, you know, a regular phone in your house. And when you go to museums, they often show phones that they had when I was a kid, you know, the, the little dial-up thing. And to me, a fire escape fits right in there with a the phone. We constantly take them off because we don't need them. But to me, that's an important piece of history. Why did we all of a sudden start putting fire escapes on all these buildings in Portsmouth? Because lots of places burned down. Now we're flooding them instead. But I think the fire escape should be preserved if it's good enough. I haven't really looked at it closely, but it's something to consider. But anyway, I think that, that um, this is very worrisome to me about what I understand about water, having lived next to the North Mill Pond, having watched basements filled up, having done everything in our power to try to protect our property from that, and having seen what Boston looks like now, what um, Miami looks like now, everybody's tried to fool Mother Nature. But if our goal is to preserve the historical part of Portsmouth, the Shaw, according to the, to, um, the Anthenaeum, was built in 1806, and it's one of the first, the last, one of the three remaining industrial properties in Portsmouth. I think we really need to think about the whole picture before we get excited about just doing one piece. Because if we raise that up and save the Shaw, but we end up flooding the thing while we're going through phase one, and now we have phase two and three to do, those are gonna be time periods. So I think we need to think about the whole picture. Thank you. All right, thank you. Anyone else in the public? Hi, I'm Sue Steri and I live at Broad Street. I read over these plans last night or Monday night. Okay. Um, my question is, what are the guidelines for um, what percentage of a building still has to be original part remain to make it historic? So if we're ripping everything out and the post and beams, which I know is what makes this important part of it, and majority of those have to be replaced, and I, I, don't, I didn't see anything about what the age of the outside was of the what are the, not the clear boards or whatever is on it, how, how far back that goes, if it goes back to the original 18. You're about 20 years old, maybe 25. Really? So I guess as a citizen, I'm just wondering, you know, what's the, what's the line before we're just saving a part of a building and recreating it? So um, that's my only question, because I know when I lived in Maine, we had to have a lot more than that. Um, I think you had to have two sides in the foundation remaining to make it historical and worthwhile repairing. My second point is, as co-chair of the cemetery committee, I hear about historic. Well, our committee gets to be the most historic because that graveyard right next to a point of graves, the oldest grave in there is 1621. So um, while I appreciate all this historic, I want to be the advocate for our historic cemeteries, which it's not anyone's fault, but in the last hundred years have been totally ignored. Uh, we now have a group of people together who uh, really do want to restore and preserve the history that's sitting in there, uh, in all six of them, cemeteries. Um, unfortunately, um, three of them are all water related. The North and Union sit on the North Mill Pond, and we have to, uh, we have an application out now to get the sea walls repaired. The Friends of South End came to um, one of the meetings, and Peter Rice asked our committee to look into repairing the stone wall that sits right next to all this area that we're talking about. Um, and fortunately, um, 
this fall, Weston uh, is going. Weston is going to do some geo testing to find out exactly how high the water level is there, because uh, we have a lot of headstones that are really recessed down in there, and the wall at that point is almost level with the street at this point. So, unfortunately, we didn't have a committee earlier, because I would have advocated for point of grace to be included in all this <coughs> master plan. I mean, we're talking about saving history. Well, you know, 500 yards away is one of our most historical places in town. Uh, people come from all over the world to visit those sites and learn about things. So I'm just shamelessly advocating for the cemetery committee to be included or noticed uh, about things going for, forward because I talked to Nick way back when this started. Um, we do fall under your, your uh, whatever, your guidelines or what have you, and um, I don't know that the city has any guidelines for what's going to happen to historic cemeteries. So I just want to put that out there at this point in time, too. So thank you for listening to my right. history of our cemeteries, and we have seven of them. So Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. So anyone else? No engineering, please. All right. <laughs> I wish I'd gone to school for that. Um, Elizabeth Bradder, 159 McDonough Street. That house on the end is is the sheaf house, the one that sits on the dock almost. Is that correct? Sheaf is, warehouse, yes. Yeah. It was put there in the in the late 30s, early 40s. Okay. Is that one going to be rescued as well? It's already above the, the tidal flood limits, and so it meets the same code, so to speak, that they're seeking. Yeah, because they were the saying it's going to be at level, but I didn't know if that one was going to be raised as well. No, no, okay. no plans. All right, thank you. All right. It's worth noting the master plan does call for some attention to be given to the, to the shape as well at some point in future phases. There'll be some, um, there'll be some, <clears throat> some work done to the shape to preserve it, just purely preservation work, but it's not part of this phase. Yeah, it's pretty low. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, excuse me. I just, I, my name is Beth Margeson. I live at 24 Marcy Street. I'm a member of the committee with Tom. I just want to address the last point about Point of Graves just for, uh, just to clarify the record. Point of Graves is not within the geographical boundaries of Prescott Park. That's why it's not included in the master plan. And there was a point in the 1960s where the city tried to use funds from the trust fund for point of graves, and they got their hand slapped by the charitable trust unit of the attorney general's office. So that is why the Prescott Park master plan is confined to the area that is Prescott Park. Okay, thank you for that information. So if that's it from the public, uh, I guess I'd like to hear some kind of motion. Oh, wait a minute, I'll close the public hearing and then have a motion. I move to approve as presented. I'll second that. I believe the purpose and intent, um, conservation and enhancement of property values, and its um, relation to historic and architectural value of existing structure. Very good. All right, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Against? Okay, get going. Thank you. This needs to be done. <laughs> Last year. Can you look at the poor old Fort Myers. Uh, where are we <coughs> uh, Petition of 490 Islington Street Condominium Association, owner for property located at 490 Islington Street, Unit 2, wherein permission is requested to allow new construction to an existing structure, add a skylight over an existing bathroom. As per plans on file in the planning department, said property is shown on assessor map 156 as lot 1-2 and lies within character districts 4-L2 and historic district. Hello. Hi. Please introduce yourself. Sure. My name's Kelly Mumper and I'm, uh, it says owner, I'm actually representing the contracting oh. um, with Thank Osprey you. Building Company and my husband uh, Matt is the uh, the carpenter on the job, and uh, he is uh, the co-owner of Osprey. And um, 
we're looking to get historic district commission approval for adding a skylight to a bathroom renovation we're doing on a third floor attic space. Um, our goals are to um, design a bathroom that's really nice for our customer um, and one of those key factors to making a bathroom really nice is natural light and due to the uh, roof lines of the third floor attic space there's no option for a wall mounted window so a skylight is really our only option. Uh, we do want to meet the historic charm of Portsmouth. That's something we really want to take into consideration. Um, so we're, we're placing this window on the back side of the building. You can't see it from Columbia Street or from Islington Street. And we also want to fit into neighborhood, uh, the other windows in the neighborhood. And so uh, if you look to the back, um, of this building and to the right side. They both have skylights uh, deck mounted the same color. So we're looking to match that as much as possible. And I've included a picture of those uh, neighbors houses as well um, in the appendix on the back um, number three. And um, let's see if there's anything else. Skylights placement in the back. Um, I just added the size of the skylight is uh, 21 by 38 and again it's going to match the, the roof color black and that's pretty much all it's not too complicated as what we've seen tonight it's just a skylight but I uh, want to hear your thoughts all right well thank you for a complete application does anybody like to speak to this Motion to approve is. <laughs> uh, I have one call. one question, if you don't mind, uh, is there an option? You you've got an arrow that shows where on the plane of the roof this is going. Uh, is there an it's, option to center it over the window that's existing in the in that side wall? Uh, that's definitely something we can look into. The main thing that we were hoping to do is not change anything structural to the roof. Uh, these roof uh, the roof uh, ridge I'm sorry Matt Let's framing framing the framing is um, about 24 inches wide so we were hoping to just uh, plop it into the existing framing and not have to reframe um, up there just for customer savings and um, we were had an inspection with our building inspector and explained to him our goals um, already for the um, for this window, so we would just need to meet with him again if we were going to do any more structural framing changes. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, so, anyone in the public want to speak to this? I'm going to close this public hearing and look for a motion. I move that we approve this um, as presented. Second. All right, all those in favor? Oh, hold on. Oh, I'm still have to do uh, this. We've got to find something in there. Yes. Screening? Screening. Um, no, screening. <laughs> um, uh, the, uh, let's see. But yeah, conservation and enhancement of property values um, and um, compatibility of innovative technologies with surrounding properties. Okay. All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Against? Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. Guys. Thank yep, you. Sorry, you had to wait till nine. But <laughs> <laughs> look at all the fun you had. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. We should charge money for these shows. Yeah, I think we could. Okay. Now we need to let John find where we are now. One forty. 147. Right 147. Right Congress. Congress. Okay, requested work session public hearing. Requested by Lucky 13 Properties LLC for property located at 147 Congress Street, wherein permission is requested to allow new construction to an existing structure, construct a one story addition. As per plans on file in the planning department, said property is shown on Assessor Map 126 as Lot 4 lies within character district five downtown overlay and the historic district so who's here to present good this? evening my name is rob harbison from market square <laughs> architects here in portsmouth 
and we are here representing the owner of this property this evening. Uh, I know you've been uh, mostly seeing Sarah, and she's off doing something fun with her family this evening. Not this fun. No. But um, <laughs> any, so, so sadly, you have to deal with me. Um, I know this has been here a, f a few times, and I think everyone is familiar with the property, so I'll move fairly quickly for the, through these first few sheets, but if you want me to pause, just um, stop me. So the first sheet is, is just a locust plan. The second shows uh, photos of the existing um, conditions in general. Um, the existing awnings uh, are being removed, and otherwise uh, most of the openings that will be connect the addition to the um, existing building will be internal. Um, the addition is going where that um, the landscaping is alongside the building at the first floor. The next uh, couple sheets, three, uh, and four show those components that I just described being removed. And I think we get up to page six, and that's where we have um, the renderings. There are a, a couple changes here, and we can either stay here or go to the elevations if you would like. But the biggest item um, is the thickness of that horizontal band, the canopy that runs around the frame of the building. I think one of the comments um, that Commissioner Ryan had last um, last month was about the weight of that and that it felt thin. And I think that was a very helpful comment for us. We sort of played with changes of that thinner and thicker, and I think um, this was kind of that happy landing spot where beyond this we felt like it started to get too chunky, but this um, gave us enough depth that it had more weight that we, we felt like it fit better on top of those uh, vertical uh, pilasters that we have. Um, without being too heavy and, and gave us a second uh, trim band that created an extra horizontal line to kind of accentuate that curve. Um, I know another item that was spoken about last month was the color of those verticals. And I think we've landed on the side that should be lighter rather than darker. And I think, I don't know if there's really a, a wrong answer, they're just two very distinctive um, approaches. If they're darker, they become much more part of the figure of the windows. And during the day, the windows themselves will read as very dark, uh, very similar to the windows that you see in the building beyond. Um, at nighttime, obviously, they'll be illuminated. So it's a different approach. For us, because we have such a strong horizontal base and such a strong horizontal top, we felt like it was important to have that middle be something to break it up so that you read that vertical element marching along to break up the length of that. Um, and so, that's why we felt like that warm gray, and this is the, uh, I think Sarah brought this last month as well, but this is that, uh, the color of that. So it's, it's a light gray, yep. Is this a material that is not going to be painted? This would be proposed as a painted hardy. Okay, I was just wondering because paint, painted color is not really, I mean, we can give our opinions, but. Sure, um, I, think, I think here, it does change it though. I, and I think part of this is this building is so minimal. And uh, for those of you who have been out there are familiar with it, the exterior masonry, it, it has these sort of two inch recesses. It's sort of like corduroy, but in building form. And uh, we've been advised by our structural engineer to try to not touch it as much as possible. <laughs> so, um, so it sort of has limited us. And I think in looking at it, the direction we came, came to was then let's go with that and let's try to do something that has a, has a minimal monitor feel that, it, that kind of enhances what's there. And that's why we like this kind of sleek horizontal uh, form. The other reason that we, we like the lighter color for those so that this thing, you know, we think along the slope of that wall as it angles towards the street on the property line, those will become verticals that will accentuate the form of this angle sweeping around. Um, versus something that's black where that whole thing will read it as an object. And there, in terms of lighting, um, there's, if you're looking at a 2D elevation, you would not see any of the light fixtures. Above each of the exterior entry doors, we would have recessed cans um, in the soffit. And then on this elevation, at the top of each one of those verticals, we would have a concealed LED strip that would wash those vertical elements. We are also proposing a concealed LED strip at the brick inset in the base. So you would have a bright horizontal line. Part of the reason we like the light vertical there as well is because there is a thought 
that maybe on February 14th it washes red and on St. Patrick's Day it washes green. So that's something that's been discussed which we'd be interested in, um, in feedback on. It could just be a warm light throughout the year. But that was the, the, the largest change, I think, was the mass of that canopy and how it reads around the edge. And then we did opt to continue with the direction of the lighter colored uh, pilasters. So are there any comments or questions on um, that? Rob, I've got a question. Um, so on the original building on Congress Street, uh, that's apparently the sign ban that is above your rounded canopy that comes around it. Yes. Um, it looks very awkward. Um, you have it painted black. I don't, you know, I'm not sure if this is something you plan on doing, but. It... I think the idea was to get as much consistency with sort of a dark charcoal color on well, those very elements dark. as possible. Mm -hmm. What we're not showing in here is signage. And I think the other thing that, that on a building like this, signage has a big impact. And I think what's difficult for us is, I know what I want those signs to be right now when we do this, but that's something that's changeable over time. Mm -hmm. So I think if you, Nick, if you wouldn't mind scrolling ahead to the concept images on page 12. If you see that West Elm sign, the thought we have at the front entry um, of this addition would be to have a sign very similar to that that accentuates that curve. We haven't shown it because it's not necessarily something that's part of the HCC and also again it's sort of this dangerous thing to do because even though I think that's the right place for the sign and I would like to think that most people would agree with that, it's a changeable component. And so very similarly on those sign bands that curve continues around for that first retail bay and, and likely a sign would be similarly on that band facing back towards Congress Street. As you continue to the next retail bay, it would be within that flat sign band. So that sign band creates the backdrop for where the signage would be. I, I just couldn't help but see that it just looked very massive. It, it appears to go up uh, on the windows a bit. It's, um, in other words, the windows go down into this dark horizontal. The band. way it exists now, there's a horizontal sign band, and below that, there's a spandrel panel. Um, and we are actually investigating now if we can remove that spandrel panel, but that's not part of this proposal um, because that component is currently being considered as replacement in kind. If we can remove that spandrel panel, we would, and then that would essentially, in essence, reduce the size of that yeah. dark band by half. Did you look at... Um, trying to cover this striated cement block with some sort of composite wood or, you know, these modern uh, woods that are not really woods or something else um, besides that 1970 cement block? It's, it, it's tough. It's really tough because we can't really fasten anything into that. Is, it the, is, it the is that a structural cement block or is that a veneer? It it's a structural masonry block, oh, which yeah. makes it even tougher because we can't start poking into it. I've been there. So, yeah, I would love to. <laughs> Lucky it doesn't leak tremendously. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so, yeah, so it's sort of that existing portion of the building is remaining as it is with new color components. Yeah. But it's really the canopy and the addition that are new. So, Any comments I, on this? Yeah, I was going to ask a question about the canopy. The top side is this sort of dark gray charcoal black. Underneath on the Congress Street side where it really comes out, you've got that sort of half moon shape. What's the color underneath? Is it also charcoal gray? We haven't spoken about the color yet, so we've only talked about, a, about materials. So it would be a flat soffit material similar to a painted hardy, but we haven't spoken about color for that element yet. I think the intent would be that it would be dark as well. So it is a, it's not a, it's, it'll be a painted element, so it's really up to you. It's not the underside of the permanent Correct. awning. Correct. You won that and part of that was, was trying to keep the plane of that thing as this very simple uniform form. So what you really read is the form of that curve and that horizontal band. Martin. Yeah, I'll, I'll start out by saying that uh, 
I think there's a logic to this now that was lacking before. There's, there's a rhythm and a logic. It seemed very random before, and I can appreciate that. Um, I, I'm still struggling with the banding. Uh, I'm sure there's reasons why you have it to mention. I, I feel it should be a little more bold, but you're saying that uh, you may use lettering like you see in the West Elm example. And to me, that's that's more than signage. It becomes the architecture at that point. And I think <coughs> that if you keep the band at this thickness and you do have something similar to that marches around that curve, I think that that's the right approach. I that think that, that we agree. I mean, that's the value of that curve. And yeah. that's our current plan with our current owner. But when I go away and another tenant comes in, right, and that's the, that's the challenge we have. I, I would show something just yep. even if you just put the word sign up there just to mm -hmm. so that we can can judge it a little better a um, couple things uh, the back is still this back canopy still just unremarkable on there's, there's nothing happening there uh, and I think it, it would be nice if if there was a dialogue between your major element and that back sign. Maybe so that's just... a perfect segue. Can we go to the next slide? Because oh. <laughs> I want to talk about that too. I think this is an element that we would, we've struggled with this quite a bit. I think we would like to do more. And there's a couple of, there's a couple of challenges there. The first is we're right up against lot coverage. Hmm. And so as what I'd really like to do is take that canopy and have it extend in a curve across the building to, the, to meet the building as well, the building face, and we just can't. Um, we're, we're right up to where we're maxed out. So what are you maxed out on? Lot, lot coverage. coverage. What's that? But the canopy, is the canopy not got earth underneath it? What what are we talking about? Gotta be in the lot. The canopy, part of the canopy doesn't. It's got pavement. But even then, part of it does. So well, the canopy's not cover gonna, it. The canopy is not going to count as coverage <laughs> unless it's enclosed and supported space. It, well, it well then I guess we can, we'll have to look at that yeah. because I think I that our, our understanding was that it did. So that may give us some flexibility there because I think we would like to do that. We no, would like there's to have exemptions for projections to a certain distance. Yeah. Um, I still think you can do something. Yeah. I mean, and still stay in the parameters. I, do something architectural. What is it, 95%? Um, yeah, you, you can do something. So um, here's the other question I have with this because I know there was conversations about the top of it and or what we do vertically. So in this case, we do have a ramp below that's existing that we need to keep for accessibility that we're trying to work around. And so we do have the columns here coming down on the perimeter of that so that it becomes sort of the frame or the outside corners of that box. And we found when we started to creep that height up, it was the same problem that we talked about previously on the side elevation where that started to look really spindly and weird. Like taller than it should be. And the other part of it is we're trying to also maintain the height over that enclosure we have on the side. And part of why we've done that is because from a width standpoint, when you're looking at that back elevation, it, the enclosure becomes part of that entry, entry form. And so it makes more of it. Um, and I think after that, we're really just trying to be consistent with the language that we've created because it is so simple to try to be cohesive. And here as well, I think we would look to probably have where this is, this is a primary elevation, but a secondary entry here would very likely be the same type of signage, but with the um, numbers of the building, uh, something along those lines. So again, to, to make a little bit more of that entry. Yeah, give us, give us something. Right now it's a bus stop. Yeah. <laughs> I, know. I mean, to Martin's point, it, it certainly looks like you could introduce a curvy linear form to, to that. <laughs> Vertically or horizontally, something. Anyway, well, and that I think that, that would be our intent. So I'm curious to get comments on that because that would be our intent is to essentially take that form where it terminates at the end of the ramp and take to do a, a curve to the end of the building. Yeah. Um, and I think what we'll need to do is just dive in a little bit more deeply, maybe to uh, coverage rules on what we can do there. Just something unexpected. So um, um, right now we could accept what's generally planned with the fact that he would have to come back to to add that curve at a later time if you you know if the uh, zoning allows it um, any other comments here this one, this is our one work more session. thing one more thing oh I didn't realize the the uh, the 
right now the beige brick I'm calling it beige it's not really it's orange that's a glazed brick correct I'm sorry where are the, you the sort of that frames out the the uh, corner bit. the corner and the roof it doesn't appear to be to me um, it's like an it's just an orange tone but it's a brick should be a stainable brick I'm just I'm just wondering if that's gonna take paint well anyway so we do have we're waiting on like everybody else in the world we're waiting on supplies so we haven't been able to do a mock-up or anything of the stain if it ends up needing to be something other than the stain we would need to come back but the intent is to do the solid stain okay. I'm done yes Margo I'm good oh, you're good Okay, so um, I guess I have to close this as far as the work session goes. Any public comments? Any public comments? No. You know, you, you, you're you going to have an opportunity at the end of this. This is the work session right. part. This is the work session oh, part. Then we'll open the public. No, no, we're not, it, we're it not voting. Public comment, but it's work session public hearing, so we have to do two. We have to do two. Okay, so, yeah. You, I got lost in all the no, no, you just stay right there and you can come right back in. Okay, so now we're in the uh, public hearing, and um, I suppose you should give us a, another short rundown. Just for the record books. Yeah. Um, Rob Harbison, Market Square Architects, uh, located here in Portsmouth, here on behalf of the owners of 147 Congress Street, um, which is the building that is shown on the corner of Congress and Maplewood. Um, we plan to remove the awnings, the existing stair and landscape bed at the exterior of the building and plan to provide a new one-story addition along the Maplewood Avenue side of the building as shown in the renderings and the elevations on file. <clears throat> um, it has a masonry base, uh, mostly uh, glass at the upper level with storefront entries at the front and back. Um, it's against the existing structure, which will largely remain. Um, the concept is to create a um, modern uh, horizontal feel with linear, uh, linear planes um, that runs along that side of the street and creates a more cohesive structure. And then at the um, parking side of the building, there is proposed a new canopy um, and storage enclosure to um, replace the existing awning to be removed. Um, and um, uh, at the exterior of the existing building, the major adjustment is that the existing masonry piers are planned to be solid stain so that they will be more cohesive with the materials of the addition that are planned. Any comments or questions? No, I think we've gone through it. So uh, is there anybody in the public that would like to speak on this public hearing? Good evening, Elizabeth Bradder, property owner 159 McDonough Street. If you got my letter, hopefully you got a chance to read it. Could you please bring up the first pictures of the existing building? <clears throat> so what I thought would be helpful is to, to look at the building as it is now. And right now, when you look at that building, it's part of the landscape. So next to it is a, a, I would call it a cream or yellow colored building with white, which blends in nicely with the white that exists. The back side of that building has brick on it, and there's brick on this building. The building across the street has a, another form of brick and has kind of a gray. I can't say much about those, those turquoise awnings, but they do really attract attention. But generally speaking, when you drive by that, it's, it's part of that landscape. It blends in and it's part of it. So when you look at the new building, the new things that are proposed, um, other than the awning, which I think should go all the way around to the back, as you have discussed, I personally think that the brick that's there should stay. And if you, can you go to the fancy building now? Now he just said that the, there's structural issues with the building, so I understand that. So if you look at it now, all you see on that corner is that building. It, it, it just screams, look at me, and it's not in any way 
fancy or something that you, it looks like a box to me. So I agree that the, the awning should go around and it should go around to the back and it could get thin, so it could have a curve on the edge and just get thinner while it goes over the top of the canopy that's in the back already. I think whatever that siding is, that needs to go. It needs to have something that has something brick shaped, shape shaped. It needs some kind of shape on that gray, what they're calling gray. Um, I personally would rather see, as I said before, the maintenance of the brick. I liked it before with the windows being white because the white windows blended in with the exterior of it. The black windows just kind of, they you can't even see, those black windows have the same lines on it as the original white, but you can't see them at all. It has no, there's no, it's just blah. That's how I think of it. So my suggestion would be to look at that, the stuff they're putting on the outside and maybe we do that. We already talked about the arch. The idea of the white on the front would be great if the windows were white because then they would tie in. But other than that, it just draws your attention to the bottom of the building. Um, I think it needs a lot of work. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, it, it just looks very, very blah to me. And you have this beautiful, absolutely gorgeous restored building right next door. You know, and then you look at, look at what's next door. It just, and this is on Maplewood Ave. So you come into Portsmouth down Maplewood Ave and then you take a left onto um, State Street and this is what you're gonna see coming down. So I'm sorry, it needs a lot of work. Um, question? Certainly. I think. Do you have a question? Um, I thought I did. I could go ahead, keep going. I is is this a masonry wall here that's blank? Right here? Next to the Y? This big gray, yeah? I mean, what is that? It yes. Needs, it seems that's like an it, existing blank masonry wall. Seems like it needs something. Uh, Isn't it yellow? Vertical sign or something. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It, it's odd. <clears throat> I guess I would like to ask for um, a mock-up. Like you're saying you're waiting for the stains and stuff, but if we could approve a mock-up um, of the stain colors before they're totally put on, on the brick. Um, it is a really stark difference. This color scheme is a very stark difference from the building next to it. So I think you'd want to you'd want to see what that looks like in, in reality. Um, I remember my question was, you had talked about putting lighting in. Is that part of this, or are you going to come back for the lighting? I wanted to talk through the concept of that okay. to get feedback. That's something we would bring the actual fixture cuts in those in locations. Okay. okay. Anybody else? Rich? Mm -hmm. um, thank you. I think this, uh, this building is obviously a tough building to work with. Um, I, I, I think you've done a pretty good job here, um, given what you had to start with. Um, I do agree that it would be nice to have that back um, entryway have a little more pizzazz, um, less, you know, maybe we talked about looking into that curvature on the on the corner there. Um, I think the signs, when they get added to the front and the band, um, to the three storefronts, I do think, like as Commissioner Ryan said, that that will add more um, letters on top of the right part will add a more architecture feature and then when the signs over that that darker banding part will make that less um but i would like to see a mock-up of the stain all righty uh so I, I, that was the public yeah that was the yeah. public okay. so yeah. i guess if anyone else in the public yeah was, yeah, was there anybody else? Hang on. Let's see if they're all on. Okay, no, no one. Nobody's raising their hand. Um, so I'm, I'm hearing a stipulation potentially to be considered for a mock-up of the brick stain prior to installation. Does it make sense that a stipulation be included to require a, a modification to the rear awning come back for admin approval? Yeah. You know, rather than approve what's here, yes. I think it's going to be possible to do it if you like it. Can. And then if that's something you're interested in, 
I'd love to ask the question of whether it makes sense if that awning band that you see on Maplewood Ave, what some people I think are saying is it could go around the back of the building. If it did, would it be at all more interesting if it terminated short of the corner <clears throat> and came back out of the building at the same distance away from the corner? Like it was it looked like it's building. coming through the yeah. building. Yeah. You know, it's just yeah. not, wow. Just yeah. wow, I didn't know we were going that far. <laughs> all right. An architect could be too high. No, I've been to too Chicago. High. It's a lot higher. It's too than high though. though. It's that, an yeah, elevation issue. But it issue. might not be a peer yeah, supported yeah. rear entrance. I mean, Good I, stuff, yeah. I think yeah. Well, I, I haven't made a comment, and I, I would like to say that this is a very awkward building. Has always been awkward, as are the rest of them that continue on down Congress Street that were all built at the same time. Um, I, I guess my big question is why is this addition even going on here? It's, but that's has nothing to do with that's not our purview but I mean we're looking at maybe 200 300 square feet if you count every inch of it, it um, in terms of location is awesome though everyone that comes to town goes by it yeah what's it going to be a newsstand <laughs> yeah <laughs> florist sell sunglasses um, but that's neither here nor there uh, my wonderings about why you build it um, so I guess we've gone through this. Um, let's have a motion. I'll make a motion to approve uh, as presented with the stipulations uh, that we had discussed. Two, there were two, the back canopy and then the uh, mock-up of the uh, painting of the masonry. Um, You know, I feel that it is uh, findings of fact are that it's uh, it maintains the special character of the district and is compatible of innovative technologies with surrounding properties. I'll second that motion. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Against? All righty. Thank you. Thank you very much. There it is. Thanks, Rob. What? Um, okay, so I think uh, Reagan is going home. And, oh, Karen's gone already. You knew that. 815. She's been gone. I know. I knew that. Okay. Yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> we still have a quorum, right? We yes. Still have enough. You need four. You're good. All right. Take care. Do we want to take a, a five minute break? Okay. Yes, this I think so. Do you? It's yeah. the last, last no. application. I mean, if you want one, please. Okay. Yep. Yeah, All right. I, th I, th I think that we've got a couple pleases here. Five minute break. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I still it. like my idea of a.
We're back. <laughs> I've always wanted to do this. <laughs> yeah, I just did it. Um, where are we on? We're on postponed. <laughs> We're on 161. P Petition of eight mm -hmm. KLP. Is this Deer Street? Yeah, it yeah. is. Okay. You have to excuse me. We have a lot of postponements written on this thing. Uh, petition of eighth KPH. LLC owner for property located at 161 Deer Street, wherein permission is requested to allow the demolition of the existing structure and the new construction of a new mixed-use building as per plans on file in the planning department. Said property is shown on assessor map 125 as lot 17-3 and lies within the character district 5 and historic district. Good evening, yourself. Mr. Chair. Uh, Carla Goodnight from CJ Architects. Hello, Carla. And Thomas Ballin, uh, owner. Right. Uh, before I begin, I just wanted to uh, bring up an example. Sorry. Just want to bring up this sample of a Luca bond that we talked about last time that uh, was sort of sure. curious. This is the product. This is the color. This is the. What part is this? The base? These are the metal yeah. portions. The siding yeah. color for the penthouse and for the recesses at the balcony areas. Siding color for the penthouse. So I know it's getting to be late, so I will uh, just uh, walk you through the presentation. Um, We've added a sawtooth, <coughs> some sawtooth brick detailing to the building, and we've also refined the window <coughs> pattern at the radius entry, and uh, we've added a, a layer of detail to the penthouse. So, looking at 1.0, okay, you can see right that there. we've added some uh, sawtooth details and refined this uh, radial corner, de corner uh, window pattern. Um, and we've also added some sawtooth detailing below the balconies at the closer to the pedestrian level mm -hmm. and and wrapping around as you come around the building here. There's some so along nice the thing. cornice detail, which is also pictured on 1.0. Moving on to 2.0, this is the building as it will sit on the lot uh, from an aerial view to just give you an idea of the massing as it fits into the cityscape. 2.1, uh, rendering of the corner of Deer Street, which is really going to be a very impactful view. Um, you can see the details of the canopies. 2.2, uh, you can see more canopies because the trees are not uh, turned on in that view. Um, and you can see the uh, a lot of the iron work and iron details um, that are over the balconies. Uh, 2.3 is the view from uh, Vaughn Street, which is now one way, so uh, nobody will actually be driving out that way from this view, but you could see it walking. Um, the canopy across the back, and the uh, we've also done a sawtooth detail uh, above the garage doors right there. 2.4. Wait, wait, wait. From wait, wait, wait. Bridge Street. What what detail did you do above the garage door? Um, it's on the elevations a little bit clearer. It's that okay. sawtooth All brick right. texturing. A little bit more easily seen. Uh, 2.5 is the same view without trees for clarity. And 2.6, um, we have been able to lower this wall uh, due to some developments attack and some additional um, our tank sizing and so forth we've been able to lower that wall and make this a little bit more uh, a little bit less of a level change and maintain the ADA, ADA, ADA access uh, 3.0 is the plans for record floor plans for record 3.1 is uh, key plans for the elevations and then uh, the rest of the three series um, clearly illustrates uh, the details along the penthouse, details along the cornice line, uh, some of the uh, textured brick below the balconies. 
and um, a lot of these details are further designed, uh, further laid out in section four. Uh, 3.3 materials and more details. And basically, the rest of the three section, it just brings everything into focus and identifies all of the materials, banding, brick detailing, windows, uh, balconies, rails, brackets, etc. cetera. Um, 3.8 uh, is a further refinement of the penthouse. If you can, we're past one, there we are. So you can see the penthouse uh, with the Aluka Bond siding and um, that some, whole thing is silver. No, no, it's what yes, color is it's that? the Depends. lighting on the um, rendering, but it is actually a darker charcoal color. This That's one, that it, color. Oh, it's that color. Yeah. I think part of our part of our challenge is if we make it that dark on the drawing, you can't really can't see anything at all. So we've got a lot of light on it. Mm -hmm. We've lightened it a little bit in the in the depiction on 3.8 for that reason. And then on 4.0, we are um, illustrating the banding detail, the sills, header details, the cornice um, details, as well as the penthouse eave uh, and the window grills, and again, um, the window grill installation. 4.1 shows the balcony projecting 18 inches. Um, also the ventilation railing, which is very similar uh, to the balcony railing. Uh, canopy details that we discussed last time wrapped in the um, aluminum composite panel. Uh, the custom wrapped uh, canopy details and elevations on 4.2. Uh, 4.3, our uh, iron, custom iron insert canopy detail for the uh, balconies. Um, which is shown in detail, this really pretty much one and four, uh, one, two, and four. The bracket is for the um, rail side is shown in detail three. And then moving into materials in section five, we have the folding doors at the penthouse. Um, we have the glazed garage doors and the um, sliding glass doors in the balcony areas. Uh, the standard brick and accent brick and this much lower retaining wall now and the uh, metal fencing we've reviewed in numerous work sessions. And then we have standing seam roofing, uh, glass canopy detail uh, clad in graphite mica and then um, we'll have a powder coated aluminum mesh panel um, which will also be custom. Uh, the storefront will be Conier on the first floor only. Colby's will be second floor and up. And then uh, we just have the uh, reference materials in Appendix A. Does anybody have any questions? Comments? Yeah, can you go over the whole thing again? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you were whipping. I moved very quickly. You certainly did. Right. We have seen a lot of this, but I do want I can, it all yeah. read into the record, as you say. Yeah. Any questions? Uh, quick question. Uh, you were struggling with a, a car entrance uh, mm -hmm. situation. Has that been resolved? We are still pursuing this point of entry. Um, the discussion is ongoing at TAC, uh, but at this point we are moving forward with the current location. And associated to that same spot on the building, um, is there, it seems like the one place that this whole thing, in terms of the control that you've got over the site and the control you've got over the building, mm -hmm. one place that falls apart is where uh, public service enters into the mix. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, is there, Anything that can be done with the, the two big green boxes? We are still looking at that. There is a lot of um, equipment on that corner. Uh, and there, you know how it is 
you know how the PS and the public utilities conversations go. Um, we want to move forward with this. We know it works, but we are working to improve this layout and situation. Um, and we heard you all loud and clear at the last meeting that, you know, we would definitely either if we did did and were able to abandon this location, we would not be putting it on Deer Street. The the if you're stuck there, correct. If you're stuck there, what do you do? Is there any kind of screening or anything that can be installed, even if it's temporary, so that it can be removed for them? No. Hmm. Um, I know they have all kinds of rules and they're entitled to. I don't want to touch the electricity any mm -hmm. more than anybody else here does. <laughs> right, right. <coughs> um, I don't really know what they're... I mean, you get an idea of what I'm speaking about. Though. No, I know what you mean. I'm not sure exactly how they're going to be facing, How what are they going to be in an L shape, are they going to be one behind the other. Um, they're still, uh, because one of them may actually go away, we're hoping. Um, oh, really? So, but we're trying not to be um, held up by that particular item. Just to say, I, I, I'm not going to prejudice my opinion of the project on the basis of that, but mm -hmm. I would love to see you come back. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Thank you. Yes. Um, so, I remember when public service put those units mm -hmm. in there, and the big discussion is should we screen them or not? Mm -hmm. And at that point, we decided not to, thinking that the the fact that uh, the screening would be just as offensive as the units themselves and, and maybe attract vandalism. Mm. There was some talk. I thought that they were going to put bushes around them, and um, they never did. I think we need to paint them black. S something must, there must be or, some remediation for it. Or have public it. art on them, yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah. So, any other questions concerning the building? I just make some comments. Comments? Uh, I, uh, you know, I think you've arrived, and uh, you know, I think everything looks right. It's uh, <coughs> your signature elements. I think took a lot of massaging, but mm -hmm. I think you got there. And um, you know, I, I think. Uh, the addition of the sawtooth brick, adding some texture and detail to the brick work goes a long way. I think it's uh, it, mm -hmm. it's very eye-catching and it'll kind of take away from the segmented feeling of the of the window units. Mm -hmm. So um, I could support this, I, I think. Uh, I, you didn't do anything with the proportion of the typical window uh, we had talked about earlier. We did. You did? We did. There were three. Now there's four, and they did get slightly their size changed for a better proportion. They they just look better. Right, yeah. right. That okay. did get changed from four units to three per floor, um, and they uh, got a little bit narrower, slightly shorter. We played with the proportion, so it's a better better size. Excellent. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm good. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, Rich. I uh, think you're. Um, yeah, I'd just like to say thank you. I think um, our work sessions have been very productive, and I think, you know, um, I think this building, um, I like it. There's a lot of, it all works. The, um, the trestles work with the entrance awnings. Um, I think this building has a clear theme. Um, I think it's very appropriate for the store district. Thank you. Well done, Carl. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I too. I, I I think this is just a a nice building. You know, it just for some reason it just sits on the site very well. Mm -hmm. Looks very appropriate. So, is there anybody in the public that would like to speak? It's like it's raining. Good evening, Elizabeth Bratter, property owner, 159 McDonough Street. Can you bring up the Vaughn Ave corner? So I like the I like the sawtooth things. I didn't the brick sawtooth. I think this was called. I didn't notice them when I looked at it, and I like the fact that the penthouse is not going to be that gray color. It's going to be 
it's hard to say from here, but it looked like it was at least going to be darker than a big white thing up there. Um, the sawtooth things are only over the garage, is that correct? Am I allowed to ask? I'm not allowed to do that, I don't think. But the sawtooth things were just added over the garage door. And they're okay. also in part of the banding at the top of at the, the top, building. Yeah. There's some in there as well. So you see where that space is that is probably there because of the garage. <clears throat> So you're going to be coming down Maplewood Ave. You're going to see the historic buildings. You're going to see the cemetery. You're going to see the railroad tracks. And then you're going to see that building with the, the missing space. And to me, the, the back side of the building, when you're looking at the whole side, is very impressive. But then when you see that corner, it feels like it's missing something. And that's why I thought something should go where that window is, whether it's more black brick or a piece of art or maybe even the number to the building. You were going to change to the number anyway. You could put your number there. Um, in big metal, that color gray letters or something. It just feels like when you're coming down the street, there's not going to be anything there. Um, I'm hoping that the landscaping will help with that angled roof there or if the angled roof could be changed to a darker color because it takes away, in my opinion, looking at it the way it is, and of course this is a modular thing, but I really feel like it takes away from what's above it. So you went through all that trouble to make those nice things, and then you have that light gray, which I'm, I don't know if that's going to be what color it's going to be, but that's where your eyes go automatically instead of to that section there. And I still think the, the railings on the... Um, um, Balconies are a little busy, but that may be safety coats. That may be required because you have those nice um, X things that you have going on there. But to me, those seem a little bit confining, but that could have been because um, code required those X's to be closed up. But those are, other than that, I think it's okay. I think it, it's come a long way from where it started, and I appreciate all the work that went into it, and I hope that the landscaping in the back will be a little bit more than four trees. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Can I just speak to three things related to the transformer? Tom Ballon, owner? Certainly. Um, so currently the, the bigger box that's out there is a switch. The smaller box is actually the transformer that runs some of the local power needs in that area. And it's that smaller transformer that can go away because we can feed the new circuit from the new bigger transformer. Um, we can't paint them black, Nick. Ever, ever source has told me that many times. They're just worried about them overheating. <laughs> but we can, you can argue with Nick, the other Nick at Eversource. Yeah. Um, the other thing I was told, though, too, is so the, there's already a granted easement for where that transformer is, and Eversource is going to do whatever they need to do in that easement. Um, even for the driveway, we asked them if we could take about a foot of it, move it over, and they're like, and their response was, you'd have to go to the CEO of Eversource. <laughs> and they're not going to do it. So we tried. Yeah. Thank you. Well, it's a necessary evil. All you can put person. them in crypts, though. They do in the city. They do when people pay their bills or something. I don't know. But yeah. It's, it's not, it doesn't have to be the way that it is. So, so Dave's absolutely correct. In, in New York City, we'll put them on roofs. We'll put them in vaults with a chimney. And Eversource only uses oil-filled transformers that can explode, and they will not put them you know, even, even in a vault underground. Yeah. They want everything above ground. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So there's nobody else, and I'm going to close this public hearing and look for a motion. I'll make a motion to approve as presented. Very unusual. Bear with me. I'll second. Uh, okay. Rich is seconding. All right. All right. Let me get the staff report in front of me. Um, it is. Uh, it conserves the and enhances the property values and is consistent with the special and defining characters of the surrounding properties. All right. Very good. So, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Against? You have your approval. Shovels in the ground, folks.
Thank you. <laughs> What's your Lucabon? So you want your samples? Do you have this? Here's the yes, uh, Lucabon. Um, Luke, I am your father. Motion to adjourn. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Does the gas station put nice. some postponed?